Love in Another Universe is the world's first panoramic virtual game. A completely new gaming device and complete interactive immersion in the game immediately became popular all over the world. In this game, unlimited possibilities await people, complete freedom of action and rich gameplay will allow players to enter another universe. Gamers act as the aristocracy on the mainland. They build an estate, train troops, develop in the field of magic, science, and technology. With the help of the goddess, they wage a fierce fight against the demons. Also, most players find their love here. In the game, gamers can make a good impression on any NPC. But in this universe, there are such creatures that you should never attack alone. This is a witch. To this day, players are still unable to defeat the witches. Many multiplayer gamers are subjected to brutal torture, after which they choose a retreat path. Undoubtedly, the strongest among the witches is the Witch of Desires named Lithia. A guy with dark gray hair in a blue jacket smiled a wide smile grinned. He grabbed the chain in his hands and said with joy, he finally caught it. It was a guy named Chengxi Jixing, player ID Wuchen 520, level 99, warrior class. He kept this same witch named Lithia on a chain, profession Witch of Desires, level 999,999,999. The target's attitude is hatred. She sat on the floor, forged with chains, and told him with a feeling of rage to just kill her. He sat down closer to her, looked into her eyes, and said with a grin that he felt sorry for her. She started screaming, what does she want to do to her? Will she have to go to the kingdom where he will receive a reward for her, or should she just go to the temple of the goddess in order for him to receive a blessing? He replied, no, he's just already waiting for her body, so Lithia, please let her marry him. She became very embarrassed and looked at him in surprise, after which she stepped aside and suddenly began screaming loudly, and it was for this ridiculous reason that he infected her and imprisoned her. This is the biggest insult and blasphemy against the witch. Jixing replied that there was nothing funny here. What's wrong with liking someone? And there's nothing like that in his courtship. Lithia asked him again in horror, so he calls this courtship. A system alert reports that the target's attitude is extreme hatred. Chixing covered his eyes with his hand and cleared his throat and said, There is no other way. The witch kills all the people who catch her eye, and therefore you first need to defeat her and only then start a conversation. She screamed his name, after which she expressed her indignation that he might be able to grab her, but she would never marry a person of a lower race. He smiled and replied, In that case, she shouldn't blame him. There was a loud bang, and she asked what he was doing. He climbed towards her, climbed onto her body, and held a flask with pink liquid in his hands. She got scared, rolled back, and shouted to let her go. He opened the flask and said that this love potion was specially made for her, and in order to get it, the goddess of love had to cause a lot of problems. The system says that this is an epic love potion, consumables effect after a person drinks this potion, the target's attitude will improve. About the subject, holy water is the goddess of love, whoever has tried it knows. He opened her mouth and poured the liquid into it, saying okay, she should drink this and not waste his efforts in vain. With his hand, he took her jaw and closed it, as a lot of liquid spilled onto her chest and poured out of her mouth. He said to swallow it slowly and not simply spill it. Tears appeared in her eyes and her cheeks turned red, and she thought that this was too much and she couldn't take it anymore. Jixing threw the flask on the floor, and a moment later, the system reported that the lithium point had increased by one. Jixing was perplexed and asked what was happening. Just one? Not even a goddess can resist this and fall in love right away. Lithia grinned and asked again, Does he still dare to compare witches with these pathetic insects? He immediately poured many flasks with this potion out of the bag and said how smart it was of him to prepare another 99 bottles. Lithia was completely indignant and shouted at him that he was a terrible person. After some time, the system notified that the attitude towards the goal had changed to average. Lithia grabbed her chest and, with an incredibly reddened face, said that she couldn't do it anymore and she was very hot. Jixing begged her to drink another bottle, to which she shouted at him that he was a liar because he had already said all this, he's just making fun of her. He asked not to twitch, otherwise he might miss. After some time there was silence, she suddenly grabbed her cheeks and said with a loving expression on her face, delicious groom, she asks for more. The current relationship goal has changed to maximum adoration. She hugged Jixing, who turned away from her with delight and said that she was squeezing him too tightly and he didn't have a drop left. After that, he reached into his pocket and said that the game prohibits gamers from proposing to witches, so he will give her a ring, 
and she will ask him to become her husband. She grabbed the box with the glowing ring and enthusiastically agreed to do it, after which she sat down on her knee and asked him to become her husband. He reached his hands towards the ring and answered, Yes, he agrees. The system window says congratulations on the fact that they are officially married. From now on, their lives, abilities, and attributes will be separated. Jixing and Lydia held hands and changed into wedding attire. On their hands were large rings with a huge blue stone. Jixing straightened his hair, smiled, and said that this is the first such marriage in the game. Now he is the boss here. The warrior's power has increased. His characteristics doubled, resistance, wind, fire, thunder, electricity, paralysis, sleep, physical damage. Abilities, magic dash, taking lives, dispersing light. He grinned and said, it's time to move on to the next plan. He must capture all the witches. Many witches were on the street in wedding dresses while he stood on the balcony with his wife, who shouted at him angrily, stop. She is there. Why does he need other witches? He answered, stroking her cheek, his wife, she is so jealous of him. She turned away in embarrassment and screamed back, no. System alert, and player Chengxi Zhixing has captured all the witches. Many girls ran around him to court him. They shouted to him how embarrassing it is to have eight at once. It is better than the existing ones. Someone from the crowd shouted that he had married his waifu and he would find and kill him. After some time, Jixing was lying in a clearing right on the grass along with lithium. To his right was a tray with a burger and a drink. He opened the system window in a relaxed state and said that all the witches were captured and he didn't even know when the update would happen, after which he would have the opportunity to find a new wife in order to continue playing. Suddenly his face turned red, he turned and looked at the sleeping lithium, after which a twinkle appeared in his eyes and he reached out to her with his hands, when suddenly he fell to the ground directly on his stomach and the system reported a warning that the gamer's hand cannot fall below the NPC's neck. He got angry and thought that he couldn't even touch her, kiss her, and spend time with his own wife. What should he do now? All his witches and demons have surrendered, everything is calm in the world. He picked up the glasses and said in the real world that it was very boring. Now he had nothing to do. He was lying on the bed in a t-shirt with the image of lithium. Next to him was a pillow also with her image. There was a lot of garbage lying on the floor in the room. He rested and wondered what next. Capturing the goddesses, he yawned again and suddenly a magic circle formed around him, glowing with a blue hue. The system reported that a person from another world had been discovered in the river of time, who had completely absorbed the powers of the witches. Does she want to summon him? The blonde girl answered immediately. The system must expend all its strength and preserve the marriage contract. But she will die, she answered, the inevitable sacrifice when saving the universe and outside the river and time, the world has long changed. One thousand years have passed. Will they be able to rewrite history and save the universe? Jixing penetrated into the space gradually without making sudden movements. If they wait, they will see. Jixing opened his eyes and realized that his head was spinning. But why is he so soft? Is this his lithium pad? As he scratched his eyes and looked around, he again wondered when his pillow had become so soft. Meanwhile, many commentators wrote various messages. Lithia suddenly asked him a question. Well, where does he put his hands, man? He jumped up in fright and shouted, Wife, she's too scary. She got angry and asked who he called his wife. He is an inferior race, and she will tear him to pieces. She created a magic ball in her hands and pulled it towards his face. He abruptly jumped out of bed and began to run towards the exit, frightenedly screaming for help, because the premeditated murder of his husband was brewing. She channeled all her powers into him and screamed at him to die. There was a bright flash of light in the room, and an incredibly strong explosion thundered throughout the area. She looked at the deep hole that had formed and spoke out what the guards were doing. How could a person get into her bedroom? Looks like they will need to be properly punished. The naked Jixing, standing opposite her, looked thoughtful and asked, Is this some kind of bug? No, this is a world-famous gaming system, and even if the server fails, it will still be able to function normally. His wife, whom he worked so hard to get along with, should have no reason to attack him. Lithia was very surprised by his appearance and screamed how this was even possible. Why is he still alive? Suddenly, there was a loud sound. She was stunned and realized that her body was hot. This is the marriage contract symbol on her stomach. What did this guy do to her? He stamped his foot and said that she herself knew everything perfectly well. Lithia stepped away from fear and shouted at him not to come near her, but he did it anyway, stroked her chin and asked if maybe she was going through a rebellious period. 
She's acting like a restless child. She screamed back that she hated him. Man, she orders him to let her go. He furrowed his eyebrows in anger and shouted back, Then everything is decided. Naughty children should be spanked. He turned her over and began to hit her on the back of her body with incredible force, while she screamed at him with tears in her eyes that he didn't have to do this. As her body turned red from the blows, she moaned and said in a trembling voice that even her mother had never spanked her like that. Jixing said that this is quite strange. Why does the system allow you to touch NPCS bodies? She screamed at him to die because she would kill him. He hit her one more time where it hurt the most, after which he turned away and said, Apparently this is still a bug and tomorrow he will contact support. System, exit the game. Lithia lay on the floor, continuing to suffer from pain. Jixing did not notice his glasses on himself and began to look for them in all his pockets, which made him wonder where the virtual glasses had gone. He turned and silently looked at Lithia, who looked at him questioningly. He approached her and asked why he was still in the game. Wait, he was taking off his virtual glasses. He was dumbfounded and grabbed Lithium by the back of his body, thinking that he should just not be told about this. Lithia screamed loudly in pain and hatred for him, and he was warily aware that he was completely immersed in the game. After some time, the door handle to the room opened and a servant entered, shouting, Madam, she heard strange voices. She is all right. This girl's name is Dany, and she is Lithium's personal maid. Description, dairy cows from birth are tied to a different measurement, popularly called the emulsion measurement, which is determined by the European size. When she entered the room, she exclaimed very loudly, because she saw in front of her lithium sitting on the bed, her legs being stretched by jixing. He turned to her and asked why she was screaming like that. Have you never seen how a massage is done? Lithia answered with an incredibly red face, that's right, she was just enjoying the massage, and as she already said, she is not allowed to enter her room without her permission. Dany leaned over and screamed back that she was very sorry, she had just heard the screams, and was therefore worried that something terrible might have happened. Lithia, meanwhile, was thinking that if her subordinates found out that their mistress had been spanked, she would lose her authority, wouldn't she? While he was stretching her legs, he tickled her sharply, and she fell onto the bed and exclaimed. Dany was dumbfounded by what she saw, and Jixing said that everyone was screaming while enjoying the massage. He is a first-class master massage therapist, and therefore the whole body can become especially sensitive. Lithia was embarrassed from not understanding what was happening, because she felt very pleased. He sharply made another movement with his finger, and she exclaimed even louder, receiving incredible pleasure. He said, great, now the end will be a breast massage. Dany opened her mouth at the unexpected turn of events and tried to say something, when suddenly she exclaimed, sure enough, she hadn't finished doing the laundry yet. The subordinate is already leaving. She immediately slammed the door and ran away. Chixing thought that it was already closed, after which he approached Lithium, touched her cheek and asked, what is it? His massage technique is pretty good, huh? She pushed him away from her and screamed who he called his wife. You should let her go, you pervert. He spoke back. The same thing happens again. She still refuses to acknowledge him. Obviously, her power doesn't affect him like that. After these words, she turned to stone and climbed into the corner of the room. He looked after her and thought, but she can order the slime to kill him. Meanwhile, she was thinking with hatred how it happened that she could not harm him with her strength. A diamond ring is truly the foundation of marriage. Maybe this is the man who is the groom chosen by the mother goddess. Jixing, standing behind her, told her that everything was correct. She was dumbfounded, and he said, yes, he is the groom her mother chose. He wondered what should be expected from his wife. She thought out, great, that's the thing, she should listen to him carefully. After the battle between the evil spirits and the goddesses, both sides suffered greatly. After the end of the battle, they all fell into eternal sleep. But before going to bed, the evil spirits managed to marry all the available witches, allowing him to choose the next successor among the witches. Something like this, does she understand this? She thought for a moment and answered, Yes, she recently turned 1,000 years old, so there is nothing special about marriage. After which she grinned and asked, Did he turn his attention to her? It was a good choice. At the same moment, she was thinking that both witches and people should fall at her feet. He walked to the door and answered without turning around, No, she's just the first witch to receive the notification. Now he plans to tell others. She stretched out her hand and shouted to him to stop, after which she asked again, Is it possible to force the messenger to walk? She snapped her finger and wondered why she didn't tell the other witches and then bring them here where they could express their opinions on the matter. 
She opened a brightly shining portal in the room, and he looked at it and answered, Yes, that's possible too. She grabbed a cloak with a special sign and said, Okay, everything is decided. He must stay here, and she will quickly return back. When she took a step, she thought that before she knew it, the theocracy of the mother goddess would become hers. Her eyes glowed a bright red hue, after which she disappeared, and he grinned and said she still believed him. He didn't expect to end up on her bed. The systemic voice said that the desire to deceive a witch is very difficult, and everything went well thanks to maternal deprivation. He got scared, looked around, and shouted, Who is here? The system voice replied that it was the system that brought him here. I'm surprised that the guy who risked his life would be such an instigator. He screamed in surprise. She herself is the instigator, and the whole family is the instigator. The system replied that it would shut down in five minutes, and he should ask questions while he had time. He shouted, What kind of irresponsibility is this? Where is he and how can he get back? The system reported that this is peace and love in another universe. He is the only gamer who completed the game to the end. He will be able to return only when he defeats all the witches, just like in the game. He replied that this would not work. In the game, he captured Lithium with the help of more than a dozen goddesses, then married her and shared the attributes, and only then did he defeat the other witches. The system responded, in this case, he needs to take Lithium as his wife as quickly as possible, divide the attributes and defeat other witches, he can start this right now. This brought his storage chest into the game, and at the moment he is level 1, but at least he will not die from the slime, he has quite good equipment. He saw a chest of things in front of him and said, what a wonderful service, there are so many world class items in his chest, and he wants to see which outfit should he choose. This is a lithium engagement ring. What horror, and what could this mean? Jonah? Deceiver, is this about him? System window reports, divine level, jade ring of the goblin king. Accessory, effect, immunity to plant attacks, restoration of life points, healing, removal of toxins, control of plant activity and growth. Description, the elven queen Sylvia made a wonderful ring for one guy, but one freak tricked the other into marrying him. He shouted that he just asked to make him a ring. At that very moment, he thought that he had turned the favor of more than a dozen goddesses into warm ambiguity, and that was all. Sylvia, did she really think that he would ask for her hand in marriage? Fortunately, he doesn't seem to have started intrigues with all the goddesses, otherwise a bloody war may be about to begin. His life is under threat. After going outside, he will need to hurry up and level up. At the same time, the second floor of the palace. Lithia came out of the magical portal and said that they had not seen each other for a long time, the queen of the elves, Sylvia. The system window reports that her profession is a dark elf demoness, a subordinate of Lithium. Description of the character, the former empress of the elven people, turned out to be on the side of the Dark Elves for unknown reasons and carries out the orders of Lithium and is responsible for guarding the second floor. Sylvia replied that she asks her highness to no longer call her the Elf Queen, thanks to the person she is no longer that. Lithia asked, did Chengxi Jixing hurt her so much? She screamed that she absolutely did not want to hear that name. Lithia straightened her arms and replied, okay, she won't do it anymore. She has a second assignment for her. She took the magic ball and asked if she wasn't good at that kind of thing. She must find all the available information about the owner of this hair inside the magic ball and the more the better. Sylvia accepted the ball and looked at it with a frown, after which she raised two hands and said, Gender human, male, age 19. Suddenly she froze, after which she again said, Demonic energy? No. Divine energy? No. An ordinary person who is not able to defeat even a slime. Lithia was very happy about this, and her eyes lit up with hatred, and she said with a smile on her face that this man had lied to her. Sylvia continued to examine the ball and said, It's quite strange. The aura of many witches hovers around it. Witch of betrayal, the afterlife, honor, full moon. There are quite a lot of them. This is simply impossible. Lithia wondered if this person was truly a messenger from her mother, their aura. But why did the mother choose a man as a messenger? She summoned the evil eye and the system reported, Evil Eye Executioner Situn, Character Identity, The Most Powerful Evil Eye Demon Box, Character Description, The First Level Guard of the Wish Which Palace Can Turn the Townspeople into Stone, Suspicious and Cautious. Situn said that he was at her disposal, madam. She asked him to kill Jixing, to which he replied that he understood her order and immediately flew away. Lithia thought, man, if he really is a messenger to Mother Goddess, then the tiny guard will not cause him any harm. 
Meanwhile, Jixing put a lot of objects on the floor and shouted, What a horror. His level is insufficient. You can dress in something fashionable. The system told him not to worry. There is no level limit on the wedding ring, so he should wear it. This will do. Jixing pointed his finger to the side and said from now on to call him the Lord of the Rings, after which he sharply shouted with hatred, A wedding ring is a useless thing and is used to piss off newcomers. The system replied that it was better than nothing. In any case, it was god-level equipment. Five minutes have passed, and it turns off. The world depends only on him, and he must understand this. The system disappeared, and he wondered what. Five minutes. A Situn appeared behind him. He grabbed his head and shouted, Is this messing with him? Situng thought, A lowly man, how dare he sit in Mrs. Rizlithium's room? This is unforgivable, and he will teach him a lesson. Why is he going to kill him? The fact is that he gave his heart to Her Highness Lithium. His tentacles began to reach out to Jixing, and he said that he knew that the system was here. Satan was very surprised and asked himself mentally, What? Did the guy notice him? How did he know that his name was that? Jixing asked without turning around, just five minutes. No need to make him laugh. Satan wondered in bewilderment, did he recognize his weaknesses and tease him? Jixing said not to hide and come out now. Satan thought, now that the enemy has seen his great emptiness, there is no point in hiding and you can't look at this guy anymore. He should let him get to know him better and show his true abilities. Suddenly, he turned into a huge, pumped-up monster with large horns and bright red eyes being in his true form. Jixing looked at him in shock and Zidung shouted, Man, he is the evil eye. He didn't expect that he could see its great emptiness. He must be very strong to resist him. Jixing wondered, is this the evil eye? The Sidung Demon King who guarded the lithium doors. Where did he come from? Sidung pointed his tentacles at him and shouted at him to get out of here. Jixing took a step and stepped on the ball on the floor, causing him to slip and practically do the splits while Sidung tried to stab him, after which he shouted at him, What? Was he able to evade using this position? This is disgusting, is he laughing at him? Jixing thought with tears in his eyes about the parts of his body that were damaged due to what happened. After this situation, he sat on the bed thinking that he was in great pain. Satun looked at him stunned and became wary, wondering if he had really sat down. His attack turned out to be such an absurdity that he decided not to take it seriously. And the man threw away so many world-class attributes. It looks like he didn't take advantage of anyone's respect or attention. This is terrible, simply incomprehensible. It feels as if even his several lives won't be enough to defeat him. Satun bowed and replied that he asked to forgive him. His attacks were as absurd as the attack of ants on an elephant. He did not come here with any bad intentions and only obeyed the instructions of the lady who wanted to find out about him, and now he is forced to say goodbye. Please let him rest well. Jixing listened to him silently, and a moment later the Sidong disappeared, and he thought that he had been carried away, and he almost died. He needs to hurry up and make a marriage contract with Lithium and share her abilities, otherwise he will be killed sooner or later. Night came, he found himself in Lithium's bed and slept with his mouth open, from which his drool flowed. Lithia stood near his bed and recalled the words of the Sitan, who explained to her with fear that this guy was very strong and fortunately his main body was in another place, otherwise he would no longer be able to serve her. She reached out to him with her hand, but he grabbed her hand and she exclaimed in surprise. Chixing's eyes lit up bright red and he said that if she was waiting for his body, she could just say so. She got scared and screamed, who else wants this? He hugged her and said that as soon as they become one, she will gain the power of an evil deity and become a real goddess. How can you not do this? She said, sighed, theocracy. He asked again, does she want it? Theocracy of the mother goddess. She answered with embarrassment while lying on the bed. Yes, she wants this. Jixing blushed deeply and drops of sweat began to pour from his face. Sitting on Lithia, he thought that things were bad. Lithia is so cute. A majestic witch and the same shy expression on her face. Is it possible to keep yourself under control? She looked to the side, embarrassed, when suddenly he grabbed her leg and said her name, and she screamed at him, what was happening? What is he doing? He shouldn't move his arms like that. The system window reports, divine level, crystal ring of temptation, goddess of love. Accessory, effect, love lowers the level of intelligence, puts the interlocutor in a state of prostration, lowers ick. Description. After the goddess of love was deceived and stripped of all her rings, her rank was demoted and she became a loner. This is the ring that the mother goddess gave him to enter into a marriage alliance with the witch. Once they are married, she will inherit all the power of the mother goddess. 
Lithia, to be honest, he fell in love with her at first sight. Lithia lay on the bed in disbelief as Jixin continued to say that he did not need other witches and he only wanted to marry her. She was very surprised and screamed, What? Stop, he should let her think. But they don't even really know each other and they need to get to know each other better. He got closer to her face and said, Yes, his dear Lithium. Why don't they get closer right now and make it the best they can? She lowered her gaze and muttered agreement in response. He thought that this was wonderful, and he had succeeded. The contract was almost sealed, and the last push remained. He reached his lips to hers and thought that everything was almost done, when suddenly Dany came into the room and fell from the horror she saw right on the floor. He became very wary and turned sharply to her, dumbfounded. Dany immediately turned away, her face turned red with embarrassment, and she screamed that she didn't see anything. Lithia got angry again and shouted at her that she forgot in her room. Dany sat down on the floor in fear and shouted, Her Highness, she really didn't see anything. Please let her have mercy on her. She came here to prepare a milk bath according to the instructions. Jixing paid attention to her words and wondered, Milk bath? Is this the maid? Lithia came closer to her and asked her to listen carefully, explaining that everything was not at all what it might seem. Did she understand her? Everything is completely wrong, and she and this guy are not on such terms. Dany screamed back, yes. Her Highness had no intention of getting close to a man. Dany knows nothing. She understood Her Highness, and this man were not doing anything. Jixing was upset and took a deep breath, and Lithia continued to say, this is called a warm bed. Jixing turned his attention to himself and said, it's cold today, and therefore it is extremely important to warm the bed before going to bed. Dany asked, should I warm the bed? He confirmed that this is exactly how you need to warm her body while she sleeps. Lithia screamed loudly, that's all. Just help in warming the bed. Today a milk bath is not required. She understood? Dany looked at her in bewilderment and a moment later slammed the door on the other side and shouted, she understood everything. Her Highness, she should not worry and rest. Lithia closed the door thanks to her magical powers and said, okay, she will seal the door so that no one else breaks in. Jixing told her wife, he is ready and they can continue. She became embarrassed and said that she had promised nothing at all and thought that it was worth starting a relationship between simple lovers. At this moment, he was already standing behind her, tied with ropes. She asked what he was doing. He laughed and replied, his wife deserves to be called the most powerful witch and even bathed in a milk bath. He can't keep up. Wife, she should not be deceived by his weak and wretched appearance. Let her whip him. She was dumbfounded and said hesitantly, no, this is not what he was thinking about. He should know that cows produce magical milk. For example, thanks to this you can change your race and become a panda. He asked again, a humanoid creature. It must be hard. You can also change from a man to a woman and back. Are these role-playing games? He grabbed his head and shouted, gentlemen, he's just excited. Lithia got angry and shouted, what was he thinking about? He shouted back at her that he hated her. How jealous he is. What was she doing with Dany's breast milk? She shouted back with embarrassment that it was just a supplement. He got closer to her and asked if she could tell him what this was for. She shouted that it was a secret and if anyone found out, a war would break out between the witches. He grinned and asked himself mentally, was the effect really that strong? Looks like he needs to start with Dany. He turned away and said, okay, he doesn't want to do anything. It's already getting light and he suggests getting some sleep. He climbed onto her bed, and she screamed at him, one second, does he really want to sleep in her room? He turned to her and replied, right, the message of the mother goddess must monitor everything carefully, the test will last 24 hours, and she must endure for the sake of the theocracy. She was dumbfounded with a reddened face, and answered him, okay. After a while he grinned, and she screamed, what is he laughing at? Half the bed belongs to her, and he must not cross the line. They both slept facing away from each other, and in silence. Jixing thought, does she think that he will just fall asleep? He must take it today. She said his name, and he was frightened by the question, did she recognize his name? Did she find out who he was? She suddenly asked, does he know who he is? He thought about it. That is, she still didn't understand, and it turns out she wasn't sleeping. He immediately replied that he did not know and asked her to tell who it was. She replied that she didn't know the details, but he caused a lot of trouble to the goddesses, trampled on their feelings. A terrible person. Jixing asked himself, is he a terrible person? She replied that she believed that he was the messenger of the mother goddess, and thought that since he was an apostle, he knew something about it. Since the mother goddess fell asleep, the world has changed. 
With the tale of goddesses and divine apostles everywhere, they are willful, and Chengxi Jixing appeared when there were too many divine apostles. It seems that the divine apostles were summoned by the goddess from the earth. They appeared out of nowhere and were very weak and small, but sinister and insidious, and more importantly, they could be resurrected an infinite number of times. No matter how many times they died, everything would still happen again. Jixing wondered if divine apostles could be mere players. At the same time, he decided to ask her a question, what happened then? Are they still fighting? She got out of bed and answered, no, they just disappeared, after which all the witches lost their memory, and she only remembers that it was very, very scary. It seems that the memories of the goddesses were preserved, but they did not say anything and only called the name Chengxi Jixing. After conducting an investigation, it turned out that people also want to find him. He fearfully wondered what, that is, what he did in the game actually happened. He began to search and realized that the system was wrong. Isn't this the epic equipment he worked so hard to create? Fortunately, his face is not visible. The paper says that he is the former human lord of the Huang Empire, suspected of collaborating with demons. Please, if anyone sees him, they should immediately contact the aristocracy and not approach him under any circumstances. Reward 100 million platinum coins. She began to wonder what he had done. Having fun and leaving all the goddesses, Jixing mentally replied that he congratulated her on her guess. She continued to shout that her reward was only half of his. How angry she is. He replied that that was not the point. After some time, a girl with blue hair and red eyes asked a question, a messenger from the mother goddess. This girl was the moon witch and asked again, right? Is it possible for us to follow the power of the mother goddess if we leave the messenger? Dany screamed yes. She heard everything with her own ears. Meanwhile, the witch of fate also said that this was great news and she was grateful for it. The subordinate shouted to her, No, it is a great honor for him to serve her highness. Rumors spread like wildfire among the film. The Witch of Treason told her snake on her hand that it was a very cute creature. But what news did this bring? The snake whispered something back to her. The Witch of Honor said that she was going to Lithium and leaving the castle to her subordinate, who shouted back that he understood everything. He wishes prosperity to her royal highness. The witches decide to gather and fight for divine power. This guy, it's decided. The fight for the Holy Grail of Wu Cheng will begin soon. After some time, water was pouring out of the statue's mouth in the room. Lithia straightened her hand and said in delight, stretching, and it's true, getting up early in the morning and taking a hot bath is the best thing. She's just melting. Sylvia, sitting opposite her with embarrassment, said to her, Her Majesty, she truly says, Taking a bath on such a refreshing morning is the highest pleasure, but on such an incredible and pleasant morning, it seems that some worm has made its way to them. Among them, Jixing sat in the pool, as if he was in heaven. Lithia replied that it was a long story, and Sylvia spoke. She promised that there would be no men in the city. Lithia answered with hesitation that it was all too complicated, after which Sylvia said, Human men are the most insignificant and most shameless creatures. Her Majesty, please, she must use her life-taking wish to turn this worm into dust. Lithia thought that her magic was useless against him. Jixing paid attention to their conversation and asked what was going on. Judging by her words, it seems that she was once deceived by a man. She became wary, and he continued to say, What kind of person dared to offend such a beauty? If he meets this guy, he will definitely help them teach him a lesson. Sylvia turned to him, calling him a worm, and said with a frown, He talks too much. Why does his voice seem familiar to her? He became wary and thoughtful. She also seemed familiar to him. She got closer to him and asked if they had met somewhere before. He was very frightened and exclaimed, Definitely not. She's confusing him with someone. He just arrived here yesterday. Lithia cleared her throat and asked again, Sylvia. She must come here. Jixing mentally wondered, is he saved? Sylvia approached Lithium and asked what she wanted. Jixing turned away and thought, thank God, he had rarely appeared in the game before. If Sylvia had recognized him, he would already be dead. The system window shows that he was once loving, the Morning Star. Lithia whispered in Sylvia's ear that her last test showed that he was just a person, but it seemed to her that there was something strange about it. Sylvia agreed with her, and Lydia looked at Jixing and said, So she brought him with her today. She should check him again on the spot, please. Sylvia said, That's what it is. With her permission, there couldn't be a better moment. Jixing warily watched as the girls whispered and wondered what was wrong. What are these two beauties whispering to each other? No, that will not do. These two girls are secretly discussing something, and he even felt uneasy. 
They both looked at him with a grin and began to talk in the elven language, when suddenly horsetails came out from behind his back, and he looked into the distance in fear. The system reports that this is an evil climbing vine, level 100, summoning plants. A huge tongue of a terrifying plant reached out to the back of his head, and he screamed in fear. How did this thing end up under him? He quickly grabbed a towel, covered his bare parts of the body, and, holding it, continued to run away with tears in his eyes and screaming in horror, not to pull his towels off this multicolored flower and to keep it away from him. The tongue of the vine was approaching his body when suddenly it rose up and he turned around questioningly. Sylvia asked, has it stopped? But she did not give such an order. Lithia also wondered what was going on. The vine suddenly began to move and grabbed Sylvia's body, beginning to pull it together. She got scared and screamed, why did the summoned plant suddenly start attacking her? Boy, what did he do? Sylvia, finding herself entwined with vines and hanging in the air, shouts in confusion to Chanxi Jixing, what did the guy do? He, looking at her, notes that it seems that because she called on this loach to attack him, the ring immediately considered her an enemy. The system explains that this goblin king Jade Ring has a divine level. This accessory has such effects as immunity to plant attacks, restoration of life, healing of wounds, suppression of poison, control of plant activity and growth. The description of it is that the elf queen Sylvia made a wonderful ring for one guy, but the scoundrel tricked the other into marrying him. Jixing understands with relief, it's good that the ring didn't come off, otherwise he would have been hanging in the air. After that, he turns to her with a smile and exclaims, if she dared to attack him, then she already understood everything, and now it's time for her punishment. She looks in bewilderment at the new vines approaching her, which in the next moment begin to lick and tickle her. Sylvia turns red and screams loudly, no, they shouldn't do this. Some time passes, and she turns out to be very tired, but the plants do not stop tickling her heels and trying to remove the towel. She continues to laugh and scream at the same time so that it doesn't do this and stops urgently. She admits she lost. She's very ticklish. This can't go on any longer. His Majesty must save her. Lithia, who had been watching what was happening all this time, sitting in the water, said displeasedly, What? She can't stand it anymore. The plant she summoned is too disgusting. Sylvia's voice is heard again, Her Majesty. Then she extends her hand forward and says, Although if everything is as he said, being the messenger of the Mother Goddess, he should be more restrained. With that, she uses a mini divine dispersion beam, and Sylvia is finally freed from the vines, falling into the water. Lithia immediately approaches her, and, helping her free herself from the remaining pieces of the plant, asks if she is okay. She, feeling relieved, quietly says, yes. Chengxi Jixing, watching them, wonders, is Lithia jealous? She rests her head on her hands and notes that it seems that Sylvia made a mistake in her previous test. He is not an ordinary human man at all. She agrees. He took control of her loach. An ordinary person is not capable of this. Even if he is not a human man, he is still crazy. Jixing, hearing this, put his hands on his hips and shouted, What? Why is he crazy? She was actually the one who attacked him first. She still still wants to test his real strength. Sylvia immediately after his words intends to run up to him, but Lithia manages to grab her. She hugs her tightly around the waist and screams for her to stop and stop. Suddenly, through the curtains at the entrance, someone's silhouette is visible, and a voice is heard. Her subordinate has arrived at Sylvia's in accordance with her orders. She turns around and clarifies, and what is the result of the investigation? The servant explains that according to the investigation on the second floor of the state palace, there are indeed slave traders who obey the slavery witch and supply human slaves. After listening to this, Sylvia turns to Lithia and frowningly says, she asks for forgiveness, but such things still happen on the second floor, which she controls. She, smiling slyly, notes, no, it's not her fault, it's all because of this insignificance of the witch of slavery. Even though she abolished slavery here, this witch still dared to come. This upsets her. After that, she loudly announces that Sylvia must go with her to the second floor. She seriously replies, okay. After this, Lithia turns to Chengxi Jixing and explains that he should go too. He opens his eyes wide in surprise and wonders why they need him. She explains that he will be conducting the investigation for her. This comes in handy. He will watch the queen destroy the small bugs. After that, she smiles joyfully, leads everyone forward and loudly adds, they should go. Let the worms find out what will happen to those who dare to give up problems on its territory. Lithia Palace has six floors. Each floor hides many cities and villages. It's like little countries. 
Each floor is ruled by a demon. The palace is an impregnable fortress under her absolute control. The demons of each floor rule over the subjects and territories, and the countries on each level prosper successfully. However, where there is light, there will always be darkness. Even though she abolished slavery, human trafficking still continues. The more dazzling the light, the darker the darkness. The sun is shining brightly in the sky, illuminating everything with warm rays. In one of the cities, life is in full swing on the second floor. Residents walk along clean streets, and some shop at bright stalls. Shixing, walking wrapped in a black robe and looking around, addresses Lithia, wife. She, being in front of him, asks what is it. He, turning back in fear, clarifies why Sylvia always looks at him so intently. She actually follows behind and looks at him with wide eyes. Lithia notes that he shouldn't pay attention to this. She just hates men. That's why she shows this behavior. He thinks in fear. It seems they all remember what he did with the goddesses before the transfer. Suddenly, he runs up to her, hugging her. In response to this, she irritably shouts at him not to grab it so tightly. Chengxi Zhixing asks her not to scream. He understands that while he does not have the ability to defend himself, he should have grabbed her at least by the leg. But just tilting his head in her direction, he exclaims that it is still safer for him to be next to his wife. In response to this, she embarrassedly notes that no, she doesn't understand what he's talking about. Sylvia saw this and thought irritably, he's a talker. Indeed, these men are of no use. But this guy looks like he is deceiving lithium. She is a little familiar with it. He pisses her off a little all the time. Suddenly, watching how he rejoices and jumps up and down happily, she roughly pushes Jixing away, placing her palm on his face. After that, she turns to her and explains that this time Her Majesty is here incognito, therefore, she should try and be as restrained as possible. Lithia sadly says, although she very rarely appears somewhere and ordinary people do not recognize her, she still should not call her by name, she should not reveal her. Sylvia understands everything, so she answers. She listens to Lee. Chengxi Jixing at this moment goes to Lydia and, stretching out his hands, shouts that he does not want to part with his wife. They should not be separated. But Sylvia hits him in the face again and uses magic to silence him. He had already been told that he should not address her majesty in any way. In the next moment, only his loud cry of pain is heard. A loud voice is heard in a small hall. A blue demon with protruding fangs and a fluffy mustache sincerely apologizes for keeping everyone present waiting. He asks permission on behalf of their company to greet everyone who came to see them today. He also thanks the support of the bondage goddess. They have plenty of stock today. The first lot is redneck slaves. The price for them is five platinum coins. Whoever is first takes it. In the middle of the room, under the bright light of a spotlight, people in dirty, torn clothes are sitting. Various monsters with red glowing eyes and sharp teeth surround them and laugh. Just look at their faces. This is great. Someone asks to be given two at once. He wants to take the chubby one. That girl looks really cute. It's worth picking up. The little blue-haired girl looks around in fear and, clinging closer to the woman, says with tears in her eyes, Mom. She, hugging her back and stroking her back, calms her down. She shouldn't be afraid. The goddess will save them. Suddenly, they all turn to the side when they hear a voice. They seem to have a lot of goods. The metal hand opens and several gold coins fall out. Mechanical Duke announces that he will take everything they have for today. His profession is a machine demon. The description is that it is a demon born of human fear of the development of magical technology. Seeing him, the monsters immediately began to whisper, This is the Mechanical Duke. Really? This is the one who single-handedly took the whole city. They need to be quieter. They must also be careful, otherwise he will cut them apart. The demon immediately clasping his hands together agrees, okay, he'll pack everything for the duke right now. But why does he need so many slaves? He explains that today is the 47th anniversary of his taking over the city, and so he has invited the other dukes to come to the party. Notes, that's it. There must be a lack of servants in this house. But the mechanical duke does not agree, not at all. He wants to organize a hunt. He will put these people in the hunting grounds and first let them escape, and then he and the other dukes will hunt them. People hearing this, the villagers are horrified. The duke, taking the sword out of its sheath, adds, by the way, he bought so many at once, can he inspect them? If the quality of the loot is poor, the other dukes will be upset. A little girl folds her hands in a prayer gesture and, closing her eyes, thinks she is asking the great goddess. If she hears her prayer, then she must save them. The mechanical duke raises a sword over them, the light reflecting from the blade. Sylvia, stopping near a small two-story house located on a narrow street, 
finds out, she reports to Her Majesty that it is here. Lithia reminds that she told everyone not to call her that. She immediately remembers good. <laughs> According to the information she has, all underground operations on the slaves of the second floor are carried out in this place. As soon as they approach the entrance, they are greeted behind a wooden counter by a blue ogre with red eyes and protruding teeth. He turns to Chengxi Jixing and raises his hand and says loudly, Today a new batch of human girls has arrived. Is the guy interested in this? They only cost five platinum coins. Hearing this, he frowns and thinks, even though earlier in the game he had seen a lot of different situations. But after he had to see it in reality, he still remains in shock. The trade in human slaves is already a whole industry. There is even such a thing as human herding. He doesn't even know how many places like this he and his friends missed in this game before. After coming to this world, nothing has changed. Several people are sitting against the wall, looking desperate and wearing dirty, torn clothes. There is a sign above their heads that says this is today's high-quality product. This is the mother and daughter of an aristocrat. When you buy one, the second one is free. Jixing squeezes his hand and quietly exclaims, this can't be happening. Suddenly a short demon emerges from a nearby building, carrying a little girl with a bloody back on her shoulder. He says thoughtfully indeed, the mechanical duke cut her not making a sound. After that, he throws her to the ground in front of the three of them. The girl has a thin stream of blood flowing from the corner of her mouth, and Lithia, looking closer, asks, Is she a human slave? She seems to still be breathing. Sylvia must heal her. She resolutely moves forward and agrees. Okay. Then, stretching out her palms towards the girl and creating a green glow that envelops her body, she exclaims, high-level treatment. Chengxi Jixing, seeing this, wonders, in the game his wife was an absolute villain. But why did she suddenly take pity on the man now? Is she really a villain like in the game? Lithia at this time approaches the little girl, who with the last of her strength grabs the hem of her robe and desperately asks, she must save them all. She must save mom, dad, and other villagers. Lithia, sitting down opposite her, asks again, does she want to save them? The girl continues to repeat, she must save them. She notes, but she's an evil witch, and you'll have to pay for a deal with a human girl's demon. She sadly looks at her and replies that she is ready for anything. Then Lithia says with a smile, great. Their agreement is concluded. With these words, she gets up and, heading towards the building, sternly says, now this business belongs to her. Blood flows from the blade of the sword in large drops. The mechanical duke says displeasedly, not enough, this is completely inappropriate. This is a little human girl just now. She was beheaded without any resistance. The blue demon, stretching his arms forward, plaintively exclaims, Grand Duke. If this continues, a considerable scandal will arise. But he just chuckled and asked displeasedly, So what? They have no one to complain to. No one on this floor can handle him except the manager. Suddenly a stern female voice is heard. Their tone here is not small. An insignificant ant dares to create disturbances here. The mechanical duke, hearing this, turns around with interest and asks what. Lithia appears in front of everyone present, accompanied by Sylvia and Jixing. Frowning, but sternly adds, the impudent man was caught with his prey. So, are you ready to pay the price? The duke, looking arrogantly to the side, noted that it seemed that a herd of curious mice had flown here. When he points his red electronic eye at them, it begins to beep. He wonders what's wrong with these people. Is this security? Why can't he read even their simplest data? Is this some kind of anti-intelligence magic? He sees that in front of them there were only translucent blue tables, but at the same time all the data remains classified. Chengxi Jixing, his mouth open in surprise, thinks this is a mechanical duke. At least it takes the strength of two human lords to defeat him. He can't die at his hands, can he? The duke, extending a sharp sword in their direction, warns that he is in a bad mood today. For their own safety, he advises them not to interfere in their business. It is difficult to organize a hunt for game, and besides, due to the fact that these slaves are weak and helpless, he is very upset. Now he will go looking for new ones, and he doesn't have time for them. They should take advantage of their chance before he changes his mind. But Sylvia, listening to this, begins to get angry, and gritting her teeth says, he is a pathetic non-entity. How dare he talk to Her Majesty like that? In the next moment, the loach is again summoned to us, the vines of which manage to throw aside the demon and reach towards the duke. When he sees this, he exclaims in confusion, What is this? Moments later, three nearby houses rise into the air as thick green vines sprout from the ground. The duke and the blue demon also fall to the ground. 
After that, he raises his head up in confusion and sees Lithia towering above them. She, with red burning eyes, contemptuously says, who gave them so much courage that they dare to buy and sell slaves on her lands. Suddenly he understands everything. This is an oppressive force. Is she really her majesty? Finally, the green vine gently lowers the woman to the ground, while the rest of the villagers look on in fear and confusion. The blue-haired girl immediately runs up to her and screams loudly, Mom, are the others okay? The woman embraces her daughter in a tight hug and says with tears in her eyes, May the goddess be blessed. The girl also sobs loudly while crying, Mom. Sylvia approaches them and, looking around, notes that there are no goddesses in this witch city. The two of them, looking up at her, sincerely exclaim, They are very grateful to her. But she sternly says in response, They should not thank her. If her majesty had not taken pity on them, they would not have lived to see this moment. If they want to thank someone, they should do it towards the High Queen of this place. Her Majesty Lithia must accept these humble words of gratitude. Hearing this, everyone who happened to be on the street at that moment fell to their knees and bowed with admiration and began to shout, Is this Her Majesty Lithia? She came to them, their queen, long live the queen. But she immediately extended her hand forward and ordered all her subjects to raise their heads. Today, she is here to deal with a few criminals. She originally didn't intend to create such a big fuss. After that, she turns to Sylvia and explains that on the second floor under her jurisdiction, there are those who, ignoring her orders, sell slaves, and also dare to be rude to the queen herself. Is there any punishment for this? She kneels and bows her head shyly and answers, Yes, ignoring the laws is a serious crime. Rudeness towards the queen is also a crime against her majesty. In her humble opinion, the crime of these two residents is simply unforgivable. They should be sentenced to death to make others uncomfortable. The mechanical duke, hearing this, raised his electronic eye to her in fear. And the demon fell to the ground in front of her and began to loudly pray to her. He asks her to take into account the reputation of the owner of his family, or rather the witch of slavery. She must spare the little creature. He won't dare do this again. Then Lithia clarified, was his owner worried about her reputation? After that, she loudly pronounces the desire to take life. With these words, she extends her hand towards him, from which red eyes and a small mouth appear in the middle. When he saw this, he screamed in fear, she must forgive him. He will never dare do this again, he asks her. The purple hand grabs him sharply, but the blue demon continues to scream, she should have mercy on him. This is followed by a loud and prolonged scream. At this moment, the duke watches this in shock. But soon the demon falls back to the ground. A purple glow suddenly begins to emanate from him, and energy flows from his eyes and mouth. He clutches his throat and says devastatedly, she took away his desire to live. Lithia, running her finger over the translucent creatures that look like little ghosts, notes with boredom, but in the end, this is a lower demon who downloaded the stench. Well, now it's the next criminal's turn. What does his desire taste like? She's already looking forward to it. The mechanical duke, as soon as he heard this, immediately screamed in fear and backed away. The next moment, with the same cry, he pushed off the ground and flew into the air. She, quickly reacting, extended her hand in his direction, and a purple-pink glow appeared from behind the duke's back, which enclosed him in a sphere. He, like a lower demon, began to loudly pray to her, No, he doesn't want to die. Her majesty must spare him. She can do whatever she wants with him. One hundred thousand, no, he will give her a million. She should take pity on him. Lithium, holding the sphere in the air, clarified, does he want to buy his own life for a million? The reward for it is only a million. Although she doesn't care, his death has much greater value for her. The next moment, the sphere began to shrink, causing the mechanical duke's armor to become covered with small cracks. He screamed furiously for the last time, when suddenly a bright fiery explosion occurred. But literally a few moments later, all that was left of it was a small cloud of smoke, quickly dissolving into the air. Lithia, looking at this, thoughtfully and lightly asked, Well, how? She is cool. Did he see this? Turning around, she asked in confusion, What? Where is he? He was right behind her. At this moment, a hand poked out from under a pile of stones, and then Chengxi Zhixing crawled out completely. He gritted his teeth and mentally noted with irritation, Sylvia didn't say a word that this guy was flying at him. If it weren't for the jade ring on it, it would have already been buried. Well, what unfortunate partners. But after that, he smiled brightly and noted that, fortunately, he was lucky. Even such a trifle will not be a hindrance for him. As soon as he had time to think about it, a huge bag marked Yuan landed on him. Jixing choked in pain and Lithia heard it. 
She turned around, and her face, like the faces of those around her, showed fear for him. The sound of the system was heard, the owner was discovered, picking up what was left of the boss, the system was activated. Followed by another alert, the system is in sleep mode, initialization failed, switching to automatic mode. Turning on the sharing mode for a fallen object. Using the above mode, he will be able to use the fallen object together with lithium. The analysis of the subject is completed. These are platinum coins, that is, coins that are in circulation throughout the continent. There are a million of them. Chengxi listened to this and smiled faintly as a trickle of blood flowed from the corner of his mouth. But he still joyfully thought, it can't be that he was crushed by a million. Too much luck seems to give him headaches sometimes. After that, his eyes slowly close, before which he sees Sylvia, from whose hand a bright green glow emanates, and Lithia, who frowns and says something to her. His eyes slowly close, and at the end there is darkness. A thousand years ago, harmony and peace reigned in the elven temple. The sun's warm rays touched the tops of the green trees. A man in armor, holding a bright red bouquet of roses in his hands, exclaims enthusiastically, he asks Her Majesty the Goddess to marry him. The girl, sitting on a throne in snow-white robes, with her eyes closed, softly says, Her chosen one must be a real brave man. If the warrior can prove his courage and strength, but agrees to his proposal. Afterwards, Sylvia, the elven queen, adds that he must bring her the doomsday silver, the cold iron of the Infinity River, and the sacred rainbow dragon crystal. Only 99 or 99 pieces. She is the goddess trusted by all elves. Besides this, she is good-natured and passionately loves her people, immaculate and sincere. The man, hearing this, exclaimed in horror, What? Even high-level craftsmen will need several months to collect all these materials. But then the voice of another man, clad in bright red armor with golden edging and a white cloak, is heard nearby. Does it take so much time to search for these materials? Most likely he's just a weakling, that's all. He has already collected all these materials. The system sends a notification that Chengxi Jixing has completed the mission. His level is 99, his nickname is Wuchen 52, and his profession is warrior. He adds that according to the promise, Her Majesty's biology must agree to his proposal, right? He hopes she has the jade so he can make their engagement rings. A spear immediately flew in his direction and stuck into the stone floor. Sylvia screamed in irritation, he's a freak. Forest Jade is the greatest treasure of their peoples. It is used as a sign of marriage between elves. Really, being a messenger, he wants to marry a goddess. Jixing, slowly approaching her throne, explained that in fact, he really fell in love with an unapproachable woman. Maybe his feelings are already going beyond the limit, but he can't help it because he's been in love with her for a very long time. He cannot resist this noble pose and eyes that are like a bright moon. He drowned in them as soon as he saw them, he could never get out. After his words, she blushes and says, what? The system sends a new alert indicating that it is in doubt. But then he presses forward and exclaims to prove his feelings. He has come a long way, gone through a lot of torment, just to fulfill her order. He asks her to agree. She must support his sincere feelings. And then, he will protect these feelings all his life. Even if his body is already completely shabby, he will do this until his death. And his feelings for her will still be with him forever and ever. Long Aeotian runs away in tears and exclaims, What a touching confession. He is a brutal man, but he was so moved. Why isn't he a girl? Can't be. He has the soul of a fragile girl. The system also notifies that he is in love and jealous to the maximum extent. Suddenly, Sylvia puts her palm to her even redder face and wonders, is this a confession? The system notifies that she is in love. The tall, gray-haired servant next to her thoughtfully notes that if this man is brave, surely even opponents of interracial marriages will not object. She looks at the floor in confusion, tries to comprehend what is happening and stutters, but she is a goddess. How can she be with the messenger of the gods? The next moment her expression softens, and that day she still believed his words. Later, despite many difficulties and obstacles, Chengxi Jixing single-handedly made his way into the slave trader's lair and saved her people, which made even more people approve of their marriage. So she gave him a god-level wedding ring, that is, the Goblin King's Jade Ring, which a goddess can only make once in a lifetime. She looked forward to the day when he could put it on her. One day, when they were sitting on a large tree branch and looking at the bright moon and the starry sky, Sylvia asked, Chengxi Jixing, that is, the Morning Star, is just his nickname, right? Can he tell her his real name? After all, they are now in a relationship. 
At first he was surprised by her question and asked again, what? But after that he still explained that his real name was Wo Cheng. Then Sylvia realized that she had found someone she could trust with her life. At least that's what she thought. A bouquet of pale red flowers falls to the floor, leaving light petals in the air, and her loud cry is heard. It can't be. The groom has escaped. How could a whole living person disappear? The servants are obliged to get it out of the ground. The guests ask her in confusion where she is going. Her Majesty. Her Majesty Goddess. What with her? She goes to the windows of the large hall and, wiping large tears running down her face, explains that he left, taking the ring. She was consumed by hatred. Sylvia flashed with a bright purple light, blinding the servant. Horns grew on her head, and black stripes appeared on her face. Gritting her teeth, she said angrily, she will make him pay for this. The gray-haired elf, eyes wide open in shock, said quietly, he is a deceiver, their goddess has fallen. She, emitting even more light with brightly burning eyes, shouted, Wo Cheng. Because of this incident, she was deprived of divine power, and in order to find this freak, she became the subordinate witch Lithium. Walking down the corridor with her arms crossed, she thought with displeasure, remembering that moment, but also felt guilty that because of her feminine naivety, she believed the lies of that man. Be that as it may, now she is no longer as naive as before. She is greeted by two maids, and a pink-haired girl with horns and a long tail, greeting her, notes that Her Majesty called her into the room. She, passing by, without even looking at them, replies that she knows that she was just about to go there. Heading to the bedroom, Sylvia continued to think, now she must do everything possible to help Her Majesty and, using her own information network, expose that guy and then cut it into 1,000 pieces. Soon she opens the door of the room and, going inside, exclaims, the caretaker of the second floor has appeared. Her Majesty was looking for her. Lithia was delighted at her arrival and answered with a smile. It's good that she came. She just wanted to ask her for something. Can she see how this guy is doing? He's been like this ever since the bag of gold flew into him. Cheng, lying in bed and pressing the back of his hand to his forehead, groans, his head is spinning. Let Lithia kiss him, only then will he feel better. She then clarifies that Sylvia has had problems with her head. She again crosses her arms and looks at him contentedly, then answers no, he's just pretending to be a fool, and that's all. Her Majesty must under no circumstances believe his games. And her caretaker attack was completely ineffective against him. But some small bag of gold drove him crazy. The guy needs to stop pretending. If he doesn't get up now, she'll call the goblins to kiss him. Wo Cheng, as soon as he heard this, he immediately sat down on the bed and exclaimed in fear. He suddenly felt relieved. He is much better. Don't bother the goblin. Seeing this, Sylvia says victoriously, now the goddess sees everything. He, looking at the dissatisfied Lisha with irritation, notes that it's all because of Sylvia's end. He failed to kiss her. But she almost immediately turns away, clears her throat and notes, he's fine, he should stop pestering her, she's going to the witch's tea party now, but she's in a hurry. Cheng wonders after hearing this, is it a witch's tea party? This is a meeting of witches to make all sorts of important decisions. You can say that this meeting is connected with everything that happens in the world of witches. This is a great chance for him to gather information. After that, he jumps off the bed, throwing the blanket aside, and asks her to take it too. He wants to go with her. Sylvia, in response to this, irritably asks, is he joking? He thinks if he asked, he can go straight to the witch's tea party. Cheng answers her angry, what is she talking about? He is the messenger of the mother goddess. Why can't he go to this tea party? But then Lithia adds that then she will especially not allow him to go there. It won't be good if other witches find out about his existence. She doesn't want to have competitors. He must listen to her carefully. Even if the opportunity to get married arises, he is her personal property. She won't give it to other witches. Hearing this, he blushes and looks at her with big, childlike eyes. But when she sees this, she says with disgust, what's wrong with his face? That's disgusting. But he jumps up on the bed again, reaches out to hug her, and exclaims loudly, So what are they waiting for? They should get married, or better yet have children. Lithia, fearfully stepping back, shouts back at him, He must stop. They should first get to know each other better, and then get married. What did he say? Children. This is too early. Sylvia, watching him and shaking with anger, thinks she doesn't know why. But every time she sees this man say such cheesy nasty things, he pisses her off unbearably. She really wants to tear out his tongue, Lithium. Having slapped him in the face and looking at the dial of his pocket watch, he said in fear, what a pity, she doesn't have time to mess around with him here. She's already late. Again, the Witch of Midnight will give her some strange nickname.
After that, she adds that now Sylvia must take care of this guy while she's gone. But she crosses her arms and notes that she has never heard of a caretaker helping a witch take care of her pet. Does Her Majesty really not know how disgusting she is with men? But she only hastily replies that there is nothing wrong with it. She found no other candidates. The fewer people who know this guy exists, the better. Wo Cheng behind her reminds her that he can actually handle everything on his own. She shouldn't worry about him so much. But she sharply turns to him and sternly says, No, someone should guard him, so she will be calmer. Who knows, maybe he will want to escape. He hears it, he understands, that's it, this is the end. But he doesn't want to be alone with Sylvia. He needs to come up with something. After that, he gently takes her hand and notes that she is too tense. He doesn't like any of the other witches because his feelings for her are eternal. He will protect these feelings all his life, even if his body is already completely shabby. Until his death, his feelings for her will still be with him, forever and ever. Sylvia, hearing this, comes into a stupor, after which her memories return, and she becomes emotional and thinks that this gives her a familiar sensation. Is it really him? Wo Cheng. Lithia, seeing her tears, immediately approached her and anxiously asked what was wrong with her. Even if she doesn't want to care about this guy, it's not worth crying. But she sheepishly rubs her eyes and explains that everything is fine. It's just that as soon as she sees a man talk such nonsense, she can't help but remember the main cause of all her troubles, that is, Chengxi Zixing. Lithia, with her hands on her hips, sternly says, What a pity. But she had already forbidden her to even think about it like that. She leaves. And Sylvia should take care of this guy for her. Cheng, listening to their conversation, understands that this is the end. Now he can't escape. But she bows her head with a smile and answers, she obeys her majesty. She can stop worrying and leave it to her. After that she understands, it seems she needs to check this person. Looking decisively ahead, she says that the guy will never forget this day. But at the same time, she thinks that she will not miss anything that could somehow hint at Wo Chung. The portal lit up with a purple glow and Lithium asked to listen to her carefully. It doesn't matter to her how, but she must look after him, and until she is not allowed to let him leave the room or anyone else to enter here. Did she understand this? She smiled and replied that she was listening and would do everything. She turned around and said, Messenger of the gods, may he not be bored here while she's gone, saying goodbye to him. Jixing waved his hand at her and started shouting for her to wait for him. He was dumbfounded and thought that this was very bad. It always seemed to him that if he was left alone Sylvia, his armor would fall off. He had to come up with something. Sylvia took a step and spoke. Finally, they were alone. She has a lot of questions for him. And although she wants to be more gentle, unfortunately she loves interrogations under torture more than ordinary conversations. She grabbed a green horse tail with sharp thorns in her hands and hit it right on the floor so that there was a loud bang and Jixing backed away in fear. Her eyes lit up with a bright color, and she said that she was warning in advance that she was different from Her Highness Lithium, and she didn't understand such terrible guys as him, so she shouldn't suck up otherwise she would make him taste the whip. After that she came even closer to him and started shouting, gender, age. He asked again, doesn't she see? She answered, male, male gender. He screamed, 17 years old. She pronounced, excellent, first and last name. He replied, you Leor? She laughed and asked again, Leor. Jixing began to sweat with fear and thought, What a horror, it always seems to him that Sylvia is not so easy to deceive, in which case he will use the ring to call his partner. The system shows that it is of divine level. Accessory effect, the owner can call to move to a partner. If the owner has several partners, then the movement will be carried out randomly. Description, the ring was made by some goddess who was in sadness, intended for a meeting with a freak. The words printed on the ring have long been erased. It says, although it's a shame to run away, it's very useful for some terrible person. Although sharing attributes is not yet possible, he can still use the skills of each ring. The system repeated the same words. Sylvia frowned and said that she had already warned him. He should think carefully before answering her questions. He couldn't try to talk nonsense now. After that, she swung her horse tail and screamed. She thinks until he feels the pain, he won't be completely honest with her. Her blow hit the edge of the bed on which he was sitting, but the system reported that the activation of the skill was completed and the movement had begun. He managed to escape. Sylvia looked at the blanket in bewilderment and wondered what. He escaped? There really are a lot of questions for this guy. If he didn't have so many secrets, why would he run away? She became alert and saw his body fluttering above her, glowing bright blue. The system reports again, the transfer is complete. 
He has been moved to her partner Sylvia. Thank you for using it. He screamed in fear. Is the system mocking him? A moment later, he fell face first into her chest and screamed loudly. She frowned, and they both fell to the floor with a crash. When Jixing landed, he said, But bad luck, random teleportation moved him to the same place. Let it move again. The system asked to wait a bit. The skill is being recharged. Sylvia grabbed his hand by the face, and he swore. A bright light appeared in her eyes, and she looked at him menacingly, saying that now it was her turn to joke. It seems he realizes that he is about to die. He screamed loudly in fear and pain. Sometime after an indescribable sight, Sylvia sat in a chair and said, Layar is not his real name. He shouldn't worry. He won't be back soon. He can tell her the truth. Besides, aren't they old acquaintances? He sat opposite her in a beaten state with many wounds and redness on his face and looked at her in fear. She said, looking straight into his eyes, Cheng Si Jixing, Wu Cheng. He asked again, looking away to the side, Wu Cheng, who is this? He doesn't know this, she confused him with someone else, but his name is very beautiful. He likes it, he's probably a great man, handsome and pumped up. She got upset, after which she got up and asked again, is this true? Doesn't he acknowledge everything she said before? Initially, she wanted to give him the opportunity to admit his mistake and explain everything, but she would never have thought that he had no conscience at all. She no longer has any illusions towards him. He must die, Wu Cheng. She screamed loudly, divine space. After these words, the whole room lit up with a purple hue, and Jixing turned away from the bright light falling into his eyes. After which his eyebrows frowned, and he saw in front of him a room where many remains of plants appeared. She said that this was a divine space, the rest of her life, and except for the witch and that man, no one could enter here. After that, she sharply struck her hand at his feet. He managed to turn around, and she continued to say, That man is just him, Wu Cheng, the only man of that time whom she allowed to enter the celestial sphere. Now he will no longer turn away. He was able to enter this space, and this already explains everything. He answered her, Sylvia, she should listen to him. The reason why he did this was his mental wounds. She started screaming that she wasn't going to listen to his excuse. What mental wounds can make a bride leave? What mental wounds can cause you to disappear for 1,000 years? He must answer her, Wu Chen. She ran after him, when suddenly she was stopped by a bright green ray of light that appeared around Jixing's body and protected it. She said, the Goblin King's Jade Ring, he really still wears it, so he revealed his true face. Wu Cheng, now they will see how he will get out of this situation. He looked at her silently. The system window shows divine level, Goblin King Jade Ring, accessory effect. Immunity to plant attacks, restoration of life, healing of wounds, suppression of poison, control of plant activity and growth. Description, Elven Queen Sylvia made a wonderful ring for one guy, but a terrible man tricked the other into marrying him. He lowered his gaze and apologized, saying that he knew he had caused her a lot of harm, but he did have mental wounds. Sylvia, if his death makes her feel better, then he wants to give his life to apologize to her. She angrily told him, again, this is a lie. Does he think she won't dare kill him? After these words, she attacked him with an incredibly huge spear, which she created in her hand. He answered with a smile, Sylvia, she suffered for many years. She screamed at him with tears in her eyes to shut up. All the suffering she endured, how can he even understand her? He responded by taking a step towards her. To this day, he has not forgotten the time they were together. She ran towards him angrily and stabbed him right in the stomach with her sharp sword. He bent down, blood flowed from his mouth, and he apologized again, saying that he loved her. Her face turned red, and she continued to sob, wondering why he was even telling her all this. For one thousand years she wanted revenge, but now it turns out that she wrongly blamed him for everything. His blood was on her hands, she grabbed her face and screamed loudly in horror, after which she began to heal his wound and scream to wake up, because he can't die like that. His body glowed green, and blood gushed out of his mouth again. Sylvia paid attention to something nearby, when suddenly Jixing asked her why she was saving him. At that moment he thought, it's good that she didn't kill him, it looks like he made the right bet. After these thoughts, she hit him on the cheek and shouted that he was an idiot. Why didn't he dodge? It would be too easy to let him die like that. He immediately wondered, is Sylvia a cat? Her opinion is constantly changing. She spoke, but now he behaved very bravely, and she would like to praise him, so she will allow him to explain himself, but if his explanation does not suit her, then she will kill him. He became wary and wondered in his mind, what? 
He risked his life, and she still needs his explanation. The system did not tell him what would happen if he died without completing the task. If Sylvia doesn't like something, he'll die right away. This will not work. He needs his buff. He touched his ring on his finger, and the system reports that this is the heart of the Infinity Dragon, Divine Level, Accessory, Effect, Innate Skills, the Art of Removing Armor, Removes the Enemy's Defense, Passive Skills, After Death he can get the opportunity to resurrect at the place of death. Only works once. Description To prove her sincerity, the King of Dragons made a wedding ring, with the help of which he shared his immortality with his beloved. A player should not use this to simply undress another person. He wondered if Sylvia would forgive him, but he is afraid that he cannot tell her the whole truth yet. After these thoughts, he told her there was nothing to be done, although it was strictly confidential, but in order to rid her loved one of doubts, even if he became the greatest criminal in the entire history of mankind, he still would not regret it. Sylvia, everything he says next is directly related to the well-being of all humanity and even the future of the whole world. So he hopes she won't tell anyone about this, but now she should listen, because he left her because the goddess of the creation of the world ordered so, she ordered him to break through to the witches and find a way to defeat them, although at that moment they were already engaged to her, but in order to complete the mission he had to leave her and leave. As the head of Chengxi City, for the sake of his people, he had to do this. He wanted to tell her the truth, but the fewer people who know about this matter, the better, and now he has already managed to ingratiate himself with Lithium due to the fact that she considers him a messenger of the evil gods. He told her that all she had to do was marry him, and she would immediately receive all of God's power. He is guilty before her, but he has no other better way than this. When the mission is completed, she can kill him, tear him into pieces, and do whatever she wants. She asked again, is this true? He marries Lithium. He said Sylvia, he swears that his love for her is the most sincere, and when the mission is completed they can escape from here together. They will go away from everyone and hide at the very edge of the world, they will live only for each other. She became wary, took a step towards him and kissed him with incredible force, hugging him. He got scared, they moved away from each other, and she said with a smile on her face, okay, she will look forward to this day. Suddenly, a bright pink spark formed behind her. She managed to dodge and this spark hit Jixing directly, which made her very scared and screamed his name. He found himself in the dust. Lithia, who was nearby, grinned and said, It means that his name is actually Wu Cheng. It's a wonderful name and she will remember what a freak he is. Sylvia looked back at her and thought angrily, which she will fight her to the end. Lithia came up to her, touched her shoulder and asked what they were doing now. Did she see them hugging? Tears flowed from her eyes and Lithia asked if she really wanted to fight with her for the power of the mother goddess. Jinxi, who came out of the clot of dust, scratched the back of his head and asked Lithia, maybe she misunderstood something. He only helped Sylvia get the insect out of his eye, that's all. Both girls became wary when they saw him and he continued to say, it's so dirty here. Sylvia, how many years has she not cleaned here? By the way, Lithium, next time she may not shoot a light beam at him, his clothes are all torn again. No matter how much, she still uses energy haphazardly. Lithia asked in bewilderment, is it an insect? Everyone was silent for a moment when suddenly she spoke, and so it turned out. She had no reason to worry. After that, she started screaming loudly, patting Sylvia on the back, by the way, they really have a way. If she imprisons the Cheng in the space realm of the gods, she won't have to worry that someone will be able to break in there. This is simply wonderful, Sylvia replied, Her Majesty, it is too much honor for her. She answered, okay, since she has already returned, then let her return her room to its previous condition, otherwise she will not be able to stay here for the night. Sylvia asked her for forgiveness, clapped her hands, and said to open the space to the kingdom of the gods. Everything around was lit up with a green tint and Jinxi avoided the brightly shining light. Lithia addressed him by name Cheng and said that since he wants to marry her, he should communicate less with other women. He responded by asking what? But isn't Sylvia her subordinate? She replied, it's also not allowed with subordinates. Sylvia expressed sadness on her face and stood silently nearby. After which some female voice asked, what get married? Lithia, who does she want to marry? She's not going to wait outside and wants to come in. Jixing looked at the bright pink portal and got scared. From there a girl's head appeared, to which Lithia ran up and began to push her back, grabbing her face with her hand. She screamed to stop and asked what she was doing. Lithia, she must remove her hand. She can't see anything. Lithia shouted back, her room is a little dirty. She must go back and wait a little. 
Then she will return when she calls her. Jixing wondered with caution, this voice, is it really the witch of Midnight Zia Yuayu? Lithia moved some distances away from the portal, as the girl pushed her away with her hand and Lithia grabbed Jixing, shouting to him, he spent many days in her palace and should take a walk with Sylvia outside. He was sent into the portal and screamed when he found himself in an unknown space. Lithia turned around Sylvia and shouted loudly to her that she must take care of his safety. She replied that she understood everything, and Lithia shouted at her not to return until she received a message from her. Until they return to the palace, they can go anywhere. Sylvia was delighted at this and shouted back that she was obeying her order, Her Majesty. After some time, it was dark in the unknown space. Bright lightning was shining in the sky and loud sounds of a thunderstorm were occurring throughout the area. A bright pink light appeared nearby and Jixing flew out of the magical portal, fell straight to the ground, and after a bright explosion, coughed in the dust and asked, Why do you need to fly vertically down through this portal? Good thing he didn't land on his face. Following him, Silvius's leg became visible, which fell right on him, kicking him in the stomach. He was stunned by incredible pain, and she screamed at him in fear, Is he okay? He fell to the ground and said that everything was fine, rolling his eyes in pain. After that, they looked around, and he asked what kind of place this was and what kind of light pillars they were. She replied, This is the magical space of the Midnight Witch, places covered with light rays, occupied human areas. Since the goddess of the creation of the world fell asleep in eternal sleep, witches began to capture absolutely all territories. Faced with such powerful creatures as witches, people did not even have the courage to resist. Jixing became wary and asked again, What? What about his lands? No, he must go look. She replied that she was sorry, but his lands also did not escape this fate, and the city of Chengxi fell. They looked into the distance at the destroyed city, and she continued to speak, The inhabitants of the villages of the cities, and even the capital are locked in these rays. The people inside are locked for one thousand years, and she is afraid that they have long lost hope of survival. Chengxi thought, In the game he really had lands and people really lived there, but one thousand years have passed here, and the memories of that life in the game are still so vivid. Those wonderful residents, reliable comrades, and even scientists who tried to resist the monopoly of the aristocracy, they all died. Sylvia asked him a question, is he feeling well? He grabbed her by the shoulder and replied that everything was fine, he had already seen so much. There is no land, and he will win it back. He invites her to go straight from here to Chengxi City. She spoke, but they cannot enter the city without the permission of the Midnight Witch. He grinned and replied that he had a plan. Lithium Palace, Hot Spring Bath. Yuan was taking a bath. She straightened her leg and asked Lithia, Did she hear that she hired a new maid from the Dairy Cow Clan? As far as she knows, their milk baths make breasts grow. Zia Yuan, Profession Witch of Midnight, Description, A witch who knows how to deceive and manipulate people, uses a power called Water Moon to create illusions of chaos. They are very interested in the culture of the gods of the Earth world. Lithia asked her to forget about it. There was no point in bathing in it. Yuan jumped up and shouted, What? She won't even let her try? How does she know? Does she just despise her? Lithia scratched her head with a smile and replied, It's not that she despises her, it's just her size. She's afraid that even if she bathes in them ten thousand times, it won't help. She is a witch without parameters. Yuan got angry, but didn't say anything, and Lithia went towards the exit, waved her hand and said, Okay, so she gets this thought out of her head until the end, she'll call the maid Dany, but she must remember how to bathe, she must leave immediately, because she will be very busy. Yuan was happy about this and thought, Well, of course, as soon as she arrived, Lithium hid the messenger of the gods. Then she will just wait for Dany and find out everything from her. Where is her future husband hidden? Meanwhile, Jixing sneezed and snot flew out of his nose. Sylvia asked him if he had a cold. He urgently needs to put on his clothes. He replied, nothing, just someone missed him. Sylvia reported that the city of Chengxi is located inside this beam, but she touched this beam and a current flowed through her hand. As he sees, the barrier is too thick and they will not be able to get through there. Her hand wound healed immediately. Jixing grinned and said, it's not a problem. Sylvia, now he will show her one of his treasures. This is a pass to land. Legendary level, accessory effect, none of the obstacles will prevent the person's return. Description, everything that exists has a soul, including the earth, and he is the true owner of it. Sylvia was very surprised and screamed, this is a pass to land. Where did he get it? 
He tossed the object and said with a grin, It's incredible, isn't it true? But in fact, the earth goddess gave it to him when he and she had a secret affair. He swiped his hand, caught the object back, and pointed it towards the barrier. A bright ray of light appeared after this action, and she shouted, What? Same. Jixing shouted instead of her, Chengxi City. Their master has returned. He stopped in front of the huge girl, straightened his arms, and was surprised at what was happening. What? What a horror. What a cool metropolis. Did the theme of magical foundations that he created turn out to be so useful and began to be used everywhere? What a horror. What kind of statue is this? Where did his statue that stood here before go? And is the Witch of Midnight really that big? She's a narcissist. He scratched his head and asked Sylvia in bewilderment, Are they really in Chengxi City? She replied, This is really an occupied territory, and he will understand everything himself. A girl appeared from the corner on the street, looked at him in a naked state, and screamed in horror that he was a pervert. Guards, they need to apprehend him quickly. Several girls and a guy started running after him and shouting at him not to move. He was dumbfounded and mentally wondered what was happening. They call him a hooligan and demand his ID. He didn't take it. The guard started screaming, is he acting out in front of everyone? Where is his ID? He is without documents. You need to hold it. Sylvia pushed him away and told him to step back. He looked at her in bewilderment, and she looked majestically at the guards, who reacted in fear to her appearance and shouted, which by they immediately fell at her feet out of confusion, and she said that he was her fiancé. Do they still want to see his ID? They started shouting back, no, of course not. Madam Witch, she is a precious certificate in herself. Madam, would she like something to drink? Maybe she's hungry. Does she want to try the local dishes? All the guards surrounded her and started asking if she was tired. Maybe she needs a massage. The lady is a witch. She must have come from afar. Wouldn't she like them to take her to the baths so she could wash off all the road dust? Jixing watched what was happening in bewilderment. But what about the blood feud between people and witches? Even if they are in a bad position now. Is it worth currying favor with her like that? Where is their face? Sylvia answered threateningly that they were annoying her and should get away from here. They shouted back that they listened and obeyed and walked away. As they ran away, one of the guards even waved her hand and wished her joy. Jixing looked after them and said, It seems he began to understand what was happening in the so-called occupied territory. Sylvia replied, They occupied people's hearts, in other words, but suddenly she stopped and told him that he could already get dressed, this would only create more problems. He became embarrassed, snapped his fingers, and the system reported a magical transformation into a fashionista. That's better. Sylvia was very surprised by his new outfit. He grabbed her hand and asked her to go with him so that he could show her a place. She walked after him with embarrassment and said, Yes. Wherever he leads her, she will follow him everywhere. Library. Inside the library, there was a girl sitting reading a book with a mug of water on the table. When Jixing walked inside and started to walk past her, she asked him to stop, asking where their passes were. He looked at her in bewilderment and wondered why he needed a pass to get here. He immediately grabbed Sylvia's hand and said, This is his bride. He still needs a pass. Sylvia was very embarrassed, and the woman stood up, bowed and shouted, This is really the Lady of the Dark Elves. She asks for forgiveness. Let her forgive her. Everything has become completely bad with her eyes, and she did not recognize her. Jixing wondered what. Does she understand demons? The girl screamed, pointing at the book in her hands, of course. To better serve as a demon lord, she read the complete collection of demon knowledge a whopping 100 times. What should she do? The dark elf lady is right in front of her, and her fiancé is very annoyed. Jixing thought, what a horror. The purpose of his books is to allow humanity to understand their enemy and not to please him. He stopped in the center of the hall and shouted to Sylvia to leave and not pay attention to these people. She shouted to him to wait for her, while the woman asked the gentleman not to run away. She stopped and said sadly, The lady witch has left, and she is marrying this man. What is his origin? A moment later, Shixing stopped and looked up menacingly, and Sylvia did not understand what the essence of the matter was. He looked up at the high ceilings. After that, he sat down at the table and began to reread some of the stacks of books that Sylvia brought him. While he sat there confused, she asked what was happening to him. He looks gloomy. He asked her why she thought books were needed. She asked what? Aren't books used to record various knowledge and teach people? He answered, everything is correct, but books are needed not only for acquiring knowledge, but also for changing human thinking. The authorities need to have a single thinking of the entire people. Under the influence of these books, the self-awareness of people in this city simply depreciated, 
and in this book, human children and demon children are more compared. All chapters talk about the superiority of a demon child over a human child. The book always says that people depend on other people or on tools, and a person will never be able to use strength to solve problems. He agrees that humans are weaker than demons, but it is precisely because of human weakness that they must unite. He created this library so that people could unite, so that they could survive in these difficult conditions, but now his people have become like this. Sylvia patted him on the shoulder and said not to be so upset. The witch Pano ruled these people for 1,000 years, and the idea of wanting to become a demon was already deeply rooted in the heads of these people. Jinxie covered his face with his hands and repeated, The thought of becoming a demon, yes. If they really want to become a demon, then let them become. As for people with a strong character, he calls on them to get up from their knees, and together they will rebuild a new city of Chengxi. Sylvia asked again, Can people become a demon? He answered thoughtfully, Of course they can. But this requires the ability of the Witch of Midnight to demonize. Can the Midnight Demo turn a person into a demon? Sylvia realized something and mentally asked herself, does this mean she also has a chance to turn back into an elf? Meanwhile, Yuan thought about it, examining her hands. After a bath, drinking a little cheerful water is the highest pleasure. She started drinking from the jug and saying, This is Dinny. How are things going with what she entrusted to her? She picked up the phone and repeated the question, and Dany replied that she used tracking magic to track down the messenger of the mother goddess and his location had already been discovered. She will send her a photo of it, and now it is in the Chengxi City Library. She was just lucky, the messenger of the mother goddess on her lands. Yuan was very happy about this and said, It's not surprising that she searched for so long and couldn't find him as they say. She didn't see him right in front of her nose. Indeed, her future husband is a cunning man. Through the system, she looked at his photo and said her dear, He probably tried a lot because of the lithium, but he shouldn't have worried. She'll come for him soon. Let him wait for her, dear, to get the abilities of the Midnight which you need to attack her. But what's the best way to do this? Jixing was thinking about what was happening while he was in the toilet when he suddenly felt the approach of Yuayu, who grabbed him with her arms from behind and stopped, shouting, He must not turn around, because now there will be shooting, the order has come. Strong and calmly sat at the table and read a book, when suddenly a magical skull appeared in front of her, asking where Wu Cheng was. Where are they? Sylvia answered, Yes, Mrs. Licha, she and Wu Cheng are now in Chengxi City. Meanwhile, she was screaming, What? This is the land of the Witch of Midnight. Why did they run there? Sylvia answered, Madam, she will forgive, just a messenger of the gods. But before she could finish speaking, Lithia screamed, Enough. The Midnight Witch ran away from her, and she probably already found Wu Cheng. Sylvia got scared and asked, What? Her Majesty, she will definitely save the messengers of the gods. Lithia screamed, Does she think she is a competitor to the Witch of Midnight? Let her wait for her. Sylvia could not say anything differently and Lithia hung up the phone, after which she shouted at Dany to get ready to leave and angrily walked in the other direction, saying that she wanted to personally meet with Zia Yuan. Meanwhile, she sweetly called Jixing and looked at him in delight. She climbed on him and said that she had learned a lot of new knowledge and he could do whatever he wanted with her. He was glad that she came straight into his arms herself. After that, I became alert and noticed something. She asked why he was silent. Is he embarrassed? He is so cute. He didn't understand. Was it right before his eyes? How did this get here? She reported, Wu Chang, Sylvia, and he could hear her voice. This is their spiritual communication with him, and he must behave naturally. It is impossible for anyone to find out about it. He must hear it carefully. She is already near her, and she is watching him. He must be careful. Yuan crept even closer to him with embarrassment and said, She can not only be cute, sweet and wild, she can do anything that pleases her dear one. He wondered what. Is it so universal? This is very cool. She spoke, so he should marry her and once he marries, she will satisfy him every time. Lithia, who was watching what was happening, got angry and said that she knows what she is up to and of course she is doing these days not for the sake of power and the mother of the goddess, but because she wants to marry him. Sylvia immediately ran up to her and shouted, Her Majesty, what did she say? Mary? Lithia also looked at her in fright and screamed, Stop. Sylvia, she had never seen her like this before. Sylvia answered, This is because she is worried whether Her Majesty will be able to become the heir to the mother of the goddess. She is very worried about this. Lithia answered, Okay, then they'll watch it together. Well, what did you think? If this is not enough, there are many more different beauties in her creator, and they are all simply stunning. He silently looked at her and said, 
It's really difficult to refuse such a sweet witch who proposed to him, but he refuses. Lithia and Sylvia press their cheeks together from the tension that was created when they were waiting for his answer, and he said that he apologized to her, but he already had a loved one. Both girls became embarrassed and looked at him with reddened faces, wondering together if the person he was talking to was she. Huayan looked at her reflection and asked, This is strange. How could he do this to such a beautiful and active girl like her? Is her information wrong? He mentally wondered, Galgame, is she really good at this? She said that she had not yet reached the end and would leave it to herself. And he thought, and it's true, she plays a lot just like him. Well, since he couldn't do everything according to the script, he simply has no other choice. He used an epic level love potion, the material effect after drinking it, the target's love for a person increases significantly, description. Holy water is the goddess of love, whoever used it knows. She took the potion in her hands and asked not to blame her now for using such an unconventional approach. He got scared and thought that this was a familiar situation for him. When the potion approached his mouth, he thought, stop. Some familiar scenario. Isn't that the potion he gave lithium in the game? Has everything turned upside down? She continued pouring this potion and saying, the bottle is a little big, but he should be patient. As soon as he drinks, he immediately falls in love with her. The girls were dumbfounded by what they saw and Sylvia asked Lithium what happened to her. Jixing suddenly extended his hand and shouted to Yuan to stop. Since she likes him so much, then she should give him this potion through a kiss. She blushed with embarrassment and said that he was right. She stopped and couldn't contain her smile as Sylvia glowed with a bright magical light in incredible irritation. Yuan said, no problem. She will do whatever her dear person wishes. Lithia was surprised by this reaction and looked questioningly at Sylvius, after which Yuan poured the potion into her mouth and reached out to Jixing, saying that she needed to do this. He abruptly closed her mouth and shouted that this would never happen. A stream of the remaining earth began to flow from her mouth, and she fell to her knees in front of him, after which she said that she did not think that her dear man was so rude, but she liked it. He looked at her arrogantly and asked her not to make a scene here. Being a witch, even if she drank 99 bottles of love potion, the effect would still not be significant. She wiped the remaining drops from her face and said that he was worthy to be the messenger of the mother goddess. He sees right through her, and in this case, she will not pretend and will reveal all her cards. She really doesn't understand. She tried to seduce him so many times, but he didn't even flinch if he missed her. Envoy feels everything, he will understand that she is some kind of boring child. Is he telling the truth, or is it all Lithia? At that moment a magical eye flew over her head, which was vigilantly looking at her and Lithia wondered with a grin, had she really noticed? Bats suddenly began to fly out of the magical portal and surround them. Lithia got angry and said threateningly, she dared to seduce her man. Is she really that brave, Yuan? How did she know about Chang and its location? Do other witches know about him too? Yuan replied, she will not tell anything. Besides, the messenger was sent by the mother goddess for all family members. Why should it be only hers? Are they already married? She was dumbfounded and screamed with embarrassment that this had not happened yet. Because of which, Yuan looked at her questioningly and asked a question, then maybe she is the girl of the messenger of the gods. She screamed again, no. She clapped her hands and said, that's all. Yuan grabbed Jixing's hand and said, they are not married and are not dating. Then what questions could there be for her because she is caring for the messengers of the gods? It's common, but she wants to appropriate it for herself. That's not possible. He wondered, is it even normal that he is so popular among witches? Lithia grinned and answered with an insidious smile. Doesn't she know that appropriating something is one of the ways of competition? It doesn't matter who comes, everyone will be the same. She won't give up the Cheng. The power of the mother goddess will belong to her. A roar and bright magical light erupted around her. Yuan was surprised by her action and shouted that she was just crazy and this was the end of their friendship. Along with these words, she clenched her hands into fists, clenched her teeth, and created a bright glow behind her, offering to fight with her own strength. They started a battle among themselves, while Jixing stood not far from them and thought, if these two weeks come together, the city will be destroyed. How will he then restore the city of Changxi? The final battle takes place between them, and they were looking each other straight in the eyes when suddenly he shouted at the two of them to stop doing this for his sake. Jixing stood right between them and pushed them apart with his hands. At this moment, many commentary words were spoken that the divine light would protect him. He frowned and asked them what they were even doing. Because of the power of the mother goddess, are they here to kill each other? 
They are completely shameless. Do they really think that they can inherit divine power only through force? After that, he shouted the names of the girls very loudly, telling them that they were all the children of the mother goddess, and she would be very sad if she found out that, because of the authorities, they did not stage a whole massacre here. Do they understand this? As the messenger of the mother goddess, he is responsible for choosing her heir. He is also responsible for assessing their potential and checking if they are worthy of inheriting the power of the mother goddess, but it is their ridiculous presentation that, to be honest, makes him disappointed in them. Yuan raised her hand and asked, then how can they pass his test and become good heirs? He grinned and replied that he wouldn't tell her that, that was also part of the test. She hugged his hand again and said with a sweet expression on her face, Mr. Minazanvoy, then he must definitely examine her well from all sides and not miss anything. He covered his face with his hand and asked her to calm down, saying that he would check very carefully. After that, he turned towards Lithium and said that he had a mission after all, and now that they were not engaged, he must fulfill his duty and go test the potential of other witches. She may have looked after him, and he continued to say that she should not worry. His feelings for her are eternal and unchangeable. She just has to wish, and they can get married at any moment. But before he could finish the last word, Yuan suddenly grabbed him behind her and showed that then right now they were returning to her palace to begin testing. She has a lot of additional props that will make the whole process very interesting. Lithia came up and hit her right on the head with her hand with incredible force, and when she fell, she said in a trembling voice that Lithia was rude. Nobody said that the check would be in her palace. They can go to her palace to conduct a check, and she can check it well too. After some time in the Lithium Palace, the bedrooms are on the top floor. Yuan walked along the corridor after Jixing, hugging his hand. Lithia approached the door, near which two maids stood, and said that Yuan would live here. Yuan stood aside and said indignantly, No, it's very gloomy here, and she will be very scared to be alone in a strange place, so she wants to live with the messenger. Lithia turned away and said that she didn't care what she wanted. Jixing was delighted, hugged both girls and shouted, Great, they shouldn't make noise because the three of them can sleep together. Yuan immediately agreed to this, but Lithia kicked him and shouted to get out of here, after which she closed the door. Lithia and Yuan found themselves in her room and sat opposite each other on the bed. Yuan, after some silence, asked Lai, what is she going to do? She replied that she would be watching her, and she should not even think about leaving this room today. Yuan looked at her in surprise. Meanwhile, Jixing walked along the corridor between many closed doors and spoke, and in the end these two witches were left alone in the room and watched each other, and he had to live alone. How sorry he is! When he entered his room, he saw Sylvia sitting there on the bed, who was dissatisfied with something and, turning to him by name, said that she was afraid that he was the only man in the world because of whom two witches began to quarrel and fight with each other. Friend, but the fact that he is safe is just great. Wo Chang looked ahead in surprise and asked what? What is Sylvia doing here? She, sitting on the bed displeasedly crossing her arms, explains that she was worried about him, so she came to check if everything was okay. Fortunately, he escaped alive from the clutches of these two angry witches. He comes closer and asks what's the matter. Why did he become so attractive? Sitting on the bed, he adds that besides, she doesn't like witches. She lowers her eyes and smiles sadly, noting that she has lost her divine powers, and in fact, now she too is like a witch. But he gently hugged her shoulder and explained that she shouldn't talk like that. For him, she will always remain the goddess with whom he was familiar. Sylvia smiles silently, the next moment she approaches and kisses him. Having lost his balance and falling onto the bed with her, Cheng exclaims in confusion, what is she going to do? His face turns red, and he notes that she wasn't this strong before. She set a bad example. Sylvia, looking at him, also blushes, and then with a sly grin asks, how is it? He liked this. Lithia will be keeping an eye on the midnight witch tonight, so they have a lot of free time. Suddenly, she straightens up when she hears her voice. What is Sylvia doing there? She, putting two fingers to her temple, explains that she is now near the messenger. Lithia comments that this is great. She wants her to take care of him tonight, not letting anyone get close to him. Sylvia obediently answers, everything will be done. But at this moment, Wo Cheng rises sharply, to which she is surprised and clarifies, what is it? But he doesn't answer her, he throws her onto the bed again, and from such surprise, she screams. Lithia, hearing this, is surprised and asks what happened to her. But she only awkwardly smiles and explains that she's fine, she just accidentally fell. 
Then Lithia, sitting on a red leather sofa and looking forward with concentration, replies, Okay, but she should be more careful. She still has the power of a demon king. Next time, she shouldn't be so reckless. Sylvia in return thanks her highness for her concern. But she chuckles and again warns that they need to be careful. Even though she is here watching Zia Yuan, she doesn't know what might come into her head. At this time, Yuan is sitting in front of the TV, playing the console, and at the same time eating snacks. Sylvia, stuttering heavily, notes that her highness need not worry and trust her. Suddenly Zia Yuan turns around and, taking off her headphones, says she is bored playing alone, so she would like to play with Lithia. Then she announces, well, she entrusts Wo Cheng to her, and with that she ends the conversation. Sylvia closes her eyes and turns redder from the fact that he is blowing in her ear and answers, okay. But then she sharply pushes him away and shouts that this is too much. Doesn't he know that elves' ears are very sensitive? Suddenly, there is a knock on the bedroom door, and a woman's voice is heard, is her dear there. She knows he's still awake. Didn't he say he had to check on her? They better do it now. Sylvia, together with Wo Cheng, was very surprised and asked in bewilderment, Is this the Witch of Midnight? But he frowns and says, Stop, she shouldn't tell this to Lithia. She should leave for now and he'll see what the Witch of Midnight is going to do. She wants to tell him something, but he cuts her off and decisively says, It's okay, she should trust him. She, pursing her lips, is silent for a while, but then answers, she understood everything. He must be careful. Suddenly, the door swings open and Zia Yuang announces, She's coming in. Sylvia quickly gets out of bed, grabbing the blanket. But when Yuan enters the room, he only sees a beautiful blue butterfly and says with a smile, What is this? It's very cute. Cheng, trying to remain calm, tells her not to pay attention to these little things. Shouldn't she be in the room with Lithia? She giggles in response and asks again, Lithia. She had one ace up her sleeve. Afterwards, Zia Yuang snaps his fingers and makes copies of the notes like this. The system explains that this is the ability of the Water Illusory Moon. This is one of the skills of the Midnight, which she is able to create countless illusory shadows that behave like real people. Wo Cheng looks at them all in shock, while Yu Ayun proudly lists Lei Mu, Ming Yu Xiang, Yu Bin Makin, Ming Yu and I. Is he surprised? These are all her clones. Lithia is now being played by one of her clones. At this time, her clone is really enthusiastically playing the console, laughing loudly and exclaiming, Big Snake Max. She gets very angry and says with irritation, It can't be. She doesn't believe she can't win. A voice comes from the TV, player number one has won. After that, all the clones at the same time as Zia Yuang says, It's strange, how can the messenger to the mother goddess be familiar with all these characters? They are all from another world called Earth. After this frowning, she notes that since he is familiar with them, it means he is not from this world, and as far as she knows, the people from the Earth are all from the camp of the goddesses. And again she, along with all the clones, exclaims, in other words, he is not at all the messenger of the pillow goddess. He is from the goddess. Cheng gets scared and wonders if he got burned. But he still tries not to show it and asks with a serious face, What's strange about this? Of course he knows them, but that's because he's been to another world. Yuayun insists, what? She still doesn't believe him. But then he adds that the power of the mother goddess allows him to open portals to other worlds. He has been to another world with her. But how can she, a witch who has never once ventured outside this world, know what is happening there? But in response, he hears her exclaim with suspicion. It seems to her that he is a traitor sent by the goddesses. It's all him, he already. With these words, she takes out a special weapon and shoots a red energy beam at him. But Wo Chang quite calmly repels with this hand, and the system notifies him that a nuclear missile launch has been detected due to marriage ties. There will be no damage from this attack. After frowning, he asks how she thinks the Buga messenger can't have the same power as him. But the weapon in her hands seems very familiar to him. This is a weapon from another world. Where did she get it from? Zia Yuan, hearing this, gets scared and quickly hides the gun behind her back and replies that the messengers of the goddesses gave it to her. They said they liked it. They wanted to be friends with her. That's why they gave her many different things from another world. These are not characters from another world that were also among those things. Then he interrupts her and wonders, what? Does that mean she was still in contact with the goddess's messengers? But immediately stretching his hand forward, he shouts that this is not so. The messenger must listen to her. Cheng just points his finger at her and says in satisfaction, she's a traitor. Yuayun, starting to sob, tries to insist, no. The messenger must not misunderstand her. She actually contacted the goddess messengers. 
but everything is not at all what he thought. She always followed instructions. She never betrayed Mother Goddess. She just likes the two-dimensional culture of that other world. Wo Cheng, sitting on the bed and crossing his legs, asked if she likes the earth. Zia Yuan clenched her fists and immediately exclaimed, Yes, she really likes the earth. There is Wi-Fi, new anime, the latest games, and also B stations. This is just heaven for her. And there are also a lot of cool guys there. She really wants to go there to look at them. He, listening to her, mentally notes, No, it seems she wants too much. She continues to list them enthusiastically, and of course, there is her favorite monster, Godzilla. It is not only very powerful, but also very beautiful. And the most important thing, it began a fierce struggle with people to protect the Earth. It even gave its own life. Cheng points out that if Godzilla were to destroy humanity, the two-dimensional culture that she loves so much would disappear forever. In front of everyone, she sat next to him on the bed and crossed her arms displeasedly. Although she didn't understand what exactly he said, she still answered, yes, she thought about it too. If this happened, then she, being a powerful witch, would definitely convince Godzilla and everything would be fine, but she cannot force it to become her subordinate. Wo Chang explains that in reality everything on Earth is not as good as she thinks, warriors often happen there. Yuan, taking the bottle in her hands and opening it, agreed, she knows, she just needs to start controlling the land, like the city of Chengxi. Hearing this, he understands right, her goal is to invade the Earth after gaining power. If she had such an opportunity, she would definitely do it. She wants to get there more than other witches. Since the goddess of the creation of the world allowed him to get into this world, it means there is a way to get to Earth. If the witches unite and find this way, the land will be conquered. He imagines how bloodthirsty witches, controlling ugly monsters, persecute unfortunate people. Zia Yuayang suddenly stopped drinking from the bottle and turned to Cheng. Why was he staring at her like that? He points to the bottle and explains, he just wanted to ask what was in her pumpkin vessel. She answers in bewilderment, there is soda, what is it? Does he want to drink too? After that, she easily takes out one bottle from the portal and handing it to him says that he can drink it. Wo Cheng takes the drink with a smile and notes, but she rummaged through it, it's even cold. Opening the can, he notes that he could not imagine that he would drink something native in another world. Yuan looks at him drinking with adoration, and then sits closer and wonders if the messenger feels anything. He is surprised by her words and asks if he feels anything. She, straightening her dress and smiling sweetly, explains that maybe a fever ran through his body or his mouth was dry. Does he want to do something with her? Cheng looked at her in confusion and noted, This girl is showing him her computer part. Then he looks at the system window and notes that this is indeed the case. She shows that he is now excited, and he can no longer control his desire. After the system also sends a notification that an attack with a negative result has been detected, due to marriage ties the negative effect is cancelled. He thinks, it seems she gave him some kind of medicine, and the system considered it aggressive behavior, so it became ineffective. Throwing the soda can onto the floor, he notes that for now he should pretend that everything worked out the way she suggested, and then he will see what this girl has to offer. The next moment, Wo Chang pushes her onto the bed screaming, what did she do? He's losing control, she has to answer. But she just straightens her dress again, blushes and giggles. Suddenly turning into a stream of air, she flies up and clarifies, does he want an answer? Then he should catch her. He tries to grab the stream with his hands, but in response, he hears her sly giggle. After another second, Zia Yuan's voice comes from behind him, she is here. Cheng notes with a frown that this girl knows how to play with men, if not for his immunity. It seems to him that he would have been fascinated by her long ago. Finding herself on the bed again, she playfully says, if he can catch her, she will do whatever he wants. He immediately tries to reach her with his hands, but she turns into an energy stream and laughs even louder. Then several of her clones appear in front of him, who simultaneously turn to him, he must catch. She is here. He must come to her. She is waiting for him. Wo Cheng. Falling to his knees and looking at them all with admiration says, Why is she torturing him so much? What does she want in the end? Finally, she finds her true appearance and, playing with a lock of hair, asks, Is her darling serious? He must clearly understand everything she wants. He should just marry her. She will gain power. Then he can have fun as he wants. In response to this, he sighs displeasedly and reminds him, But he already has Lithia. Yuan exclaims that she can give him ten times more than Lithia. She has real clones. Then Cheng takes out a small ring and mentally exclaims, she is insatiable. 
and this thing is almost the same. It's time for him to complete his mission. Afterwards, handing the ring to her, he says, he realized, should he have gotten this engagement ring earlier? Will she suffer from this sin? With these words, he conveys this to. The system explains that this is a ring called the Heart of the Infinity Dragon with a divine level. This accessory has the same effect as innate skills. That is, it has the art of removing armor and removes protection from the enemy. In addition, there are passive skills, that is, after death, the owner can get one opportunity to be resurrected on the spot. The description of the ring is that to prove sincerity, the king of the dragons made a wedding ring, with the help of which he shared immortality with his beloved. P.S. A player should not use this to simply undress another person. Zia Yuayan says this contentedly, but what kind of feeling is this excitement? Can't he restrain himself anymore? Cheng says with the last of his strength, she is mean. But she asks again, as if nothing had happened, what? Is he still going to compliment her? She is grateful for his praise. Putting the ring on her finger, she exclaims loudly, finally. That day came when she became a god. She then laughs furiously as blue lightning bolts appear near her. At this moment, he also smiles slyly and puts on the ring. A bright flash appears in front of them, and a stern voice clarifies, The Witch of Midnight, Zia Yuayang. For richer and for poorer, in sickness and in health, are they ready to be together forever and ever? She says hastily, yes, she's ready. Faster. After that, the voice comes again and notes, okay, now they are married. It wishes them happiness. Yuai uncovers his eyes with his hand from the bright light. Again, there is a bright flash, and finally it goes out. She slowly opens her eyes and says enthusiastically, she did it. She became a new deity. Clenching her fists tightly and raising them up, she screams with tears in the corners of her eyes, this is cool. Earth, she goes. The guys from Station B should be waiting for her. After that, Zia Yuayong extends her hand forward and orders the door to another world should open for her. But when nothing happens, she asks in confusion, What? Isn't this the same spell? Wo Cheng is lying on the bed at this time and slowly eating a banana, looking at her with boredom. She continues to say, A tear must open, but that doesn't work either. In her name and her wishes, it must obscure the sun, moon, and starry sky, and bring her an eternal dark night. It can't be. That's also wrong. The doors of darkness must open. Let the darkness break out. Let the power of the king pierce the cappuccino and show her the way. The prototype of the wings of darkness, Jax II. Yuayan begins to get angry and throws the blindfold on the bed, screaming loudly, this is not the same. Finally, he clarifies, has his wife played enough? She angrily asks, what's the matter? She's a deity now. Why can't she open a portal to another world? Cheng explains tiredly because Mother Goddess's powers and everything were fake. In fact, nothing like that exists. He just created it for her to marry, that's all. When she hears this, she feels as if her whole body is covered with cracks, and in a stupor she clarifies, what? Thousand years ago in Zia Yuayong Palace, players try very hard to leave a good impression. They look at her enthusiastically and sincerely ask that they should go on a date. They have a new game to offer her. Here are the newest dolls she should take. No, everyone else should leave her because she belongs to him. Yuayan, blushing and smiling widely, exclaims, she is very grateful to them for the gifts. She likes everything so much. The system notifies that its relationship with these players is in the stage of adoration. At this point, she slyly notes that these people are so easy to deceive. As soon as she created a fake control panel, countless idiots came here to give her gifts. Suddenly, a loud explosion is heard, and their voices are heard. Someone attacked them, who decided to ruin her and Zia Yuayon's honeymoon. What is this? If anyone dares to touch her today, he, Wang Jings, will throw himself off the cliff. After that, all the players resolutely surrounded her, and turning to the scene of the explosion, the Yuayun support club vowed to protect their angel until death. A silhouette is visible among the dust rising in the air, and then Lithia comes out to them with glowing red eyes. She breathes heavily, and the players, seeing her, are delighted. Zia Yuayong first shouts at them to wake up. Then she comes forward and asks what Lithia is doing here. She extends her right hand forward and casts spiritual shackles on it. Yuayan, finding herself imprisoned in strong purple chains, orders her to stop everything immediately. The players watch her in horror, saying anxiously, This can't be happening. Suddenly a voice is heard behind them. What are they shouting? They were tricked by the Witch of Midnight, and they didn't even notice it. They turn around and realize he is the first player in history to attack a witch. Cheng Zijixing. 
He immediately explains that the witch cannot fight normally, and the so-called attitude is just an illusion created by her. The players, hearing this, thoughtfully discuss, is this an illusion? It is not surprising that the attitude was at the level of love. This must be the case, Cheng was already giving in to fighting the witch. But why did the man come here who attacked the witch with desire? The next moment they start screaming Lithia, has she gone crazy? Why is she helping the messenger? She needs to get out of here now. Even if UIN deceive them, they still love her. In response to this, she shoots at them and says, Mother's Divine Ray. The next moment a notification appears that four players have fallen in battle. Seeing this, Zia Yuan realizes in horror that her fans have disappeared. Wo Chang approaches Lithia and notes that she is great. Seeing this, Yuan screams in confusion, has she gone crazy? Why is she helping this messenger? She says as if spellbound, because she will do everything that her beloved tells her. Then Zia Yuan turns to him and exclaims again, it can't be. What did he do to Lithia? But Cheng points out that he doesn't have to say anything. And then, taking out a flask with a purple liquid, he adds, because very soon it will become the same, and then justice will be restored. When she sees this, her teeth naturally say, Is this the elixir of the goddess of love? This can't be. Evening comes and everything is under the bluish glow of the moon. Yuayan, carefully walking forward on his heels, notes that she remembered everything. He is the most terrible messenger in history, Chengxi Jixing. It's him, she and Lithia. Wo Cheng, frowning, thinks better than her. He remembers that the memories were apparently erased by the goddess of the creation of the world. But she seems to remember something, what's going on? Is it possible that memory is restored after an engagement? Zia Yuayong places one palm on her head and painfully says no. Pressing herself against the white wall, she adds that she doesn't want to marry him. He stood opposite and crossed his arms and asked what? She just wanted to marry him, and now she's trying to cancel everything. But Yuayong screams in fear, he may believe it, he may not. But she will tell everyone who he is, and then all the witches will start a hunt for his head. In response to this, he says, she can try. But she must not forget that they are now husband and wife, and they have one life for two. In other words, if he dies, then she will die too. Zia Yuayong, hearing this, exclaims with hatred, he is a freak. She will kill him. An axe appears in her hand, and she runs up to him, with the intention of hitting him. Cheng completely calmly, without even blinking, stops the blade with one finger and mockingly says, it's useless. As long as they are married, she cannot harm him. Moreover, he completely mastered her abilities. After his words, she is horrified and exclaims, what? Wo Chang, creating copies of it, notes, it seems like this. He uses the water illusory moon skill and lists, philosopher, Di Yu Wu. She looks forward in fear as he shows her all his clones and says, she should feel the charm of the philosopher. Van Def, who fox? After that, two athletes appear in front of her, a man in red shorts, pulling the other man's hands back and screaming furiously, let him try to attack. A man in brown shorts, with a tinge of pain in his voice, says, knife 666, knife 9999. Zia Yuayong finally announces that she can't stand it anymore. What does he want? He shouldn't go near her. But Cheng does not listen at all to her base exclaims, on target, a philosopher. Shadow stream dance. After that, only her drawn out scream, filled with disgust, is heard, no. At this time, in the Lithia Palace on the third floor, there are mountains of gold, which are guarded by a purple dragon. It, seeing a small bat, looks up and rises, exhaling steam from its nose and opening its wings. The system explains that this is lowly in the form of a dragon. She is the goddess of times and dragons. She was once a proud noble goddess of the dragon race, for unknown reasons, she entered into an agreement with Lithia and now lives on the third floor of her palace. The bat, flying up to her, orders the big girl to finally get up. Lowly frowns and exclaims, the witch has come. Lithia first turns into a stream of dark purple energy and then returns to her normal appearance. She wonders if Lowly was looking for her. She explains that she was far from her homeland and guarded this place for her for hundreds of years. Now it's time for the witch to fulfill her promise. But first Lithia clarifies, has she already found the person to kill? She confirms this, yes, now she just feels the heart of the dragon of eternity. That guy showed up again. She needs the witch to fulfill her promise and help her kill that insignificant person. She agrees, no problem, but first she will introduce Loli to someone. With her, her revenge plan will be even more successful. On the second floor of the palace in her room, Sylvia's voice is heard, strange, where is it? She definitely remembers leaving it here somewhere. 
She almost climbed into the closet and is looking for the right thing in the box. Soon she joyfully says, she found this one. Turns out it was there all along. Great. With these words, she picks up an oval frame with a portrait of Wo Cheng in armor of Chengxi Jixing and carefully wipes off the dust. At this moment, the voice of Lithia is heard behind her, who comes out of the portal, she has good news. Sylvia quickly puts the item back in the box, and she adds, she will jump for joy. Finally found an option together. Sylvia frowns and asks if this is what she thought it was. At this moment, she wonders, has Her Majesty already found out everything about Cheng? But Lithia announces that he will introduce her to a colleague. She is the same as Sylvia, she also suffered at the hands of that freak, now she is on his trail. The sacred animal of the Huang Empire is the ruler of the dragon race, the dragon goddess. She, listening to this, thinks about dragons. Goddess? A purple tail appears from the portal, and then Lithia announces that her name is Loli. She comes out of the portal completely and modestly says, she is glad to meet you. The information box explains that she is a dragon goddess in human form. She changed her appearance to hide her status. Sylvia, seeing her, blushes and, trying to hold back her laughter, says, this is too much. Chengxi Jixing did not even spare the child. But Loli responds to this irritably by explaining that she is not a child. She became like this because she lost her divine power. Lithia, gently patting her on the head, agrees, yes. When the little girl found her, she looked completely different. But in response to this, Loli begins to wave her hands and orders that the stupid witch not say the word baby. She agrees, but at the same time laughs loudly. Okay, I took it. But Loli adds that she should not treat her like a child. Lithia also agrees. She understood everything. Will her apology alone be enough? After that, she hands her a large pink lollipop and explains that she can have it. This is her gift as an apology. Loli snatches the candy, but adds that the witch shouldn't think that she can just get away with anything. After that, she turns away and crosses her arms displeasedly and notes, Okay, worth getting back to business. That guy named Chengxi Jixing betrayed both people and goddesses. Having deceived the goddesses, he got hold of countless treasures. How can they let him get away with this? Then, pointing to Sylvius, she announces that she needs the Dark Elf's help. She should join them in their league of cheated wives. There is an awkward pause, and Lithia clarifies that this name was definitely invented by the Goddess of Midnight, but her organization is called differently, isn't it? Loli gets scared and understands that it was too thoughtless. She said it just like that. Sylvia notes, but she is the goddess of the Huan Empire and also a sacred beast. How can she work together with the witches on her territory? Are you sure there won't be any problems with this? But while eating the candy, she notes that she has not been a sacred animal for a long time. Lithia also adds, she didn't know about it. The Huang Empire completely broke off relations with the goddesses. Now only Vasilia and the Hawk Federation still believe in goddesses. Although she is very glad that Sylvia is working so hard, sometimes it is still necessary to go outside to find out the situation in the world. She, looking away towards the pensive man, agrees, yes, it seems her majesty is right. Loli also adds that the goddess forbade people to study the art of magic, and the Huang Empire is the cradle of this art. And this is their mistake. Since this happened, then she, being a goddess, could not remain the sacred beast of the empire, because if she had not left, it would have meant that she had become an enemy of the goddesses who supported the ban, and the Huang Empire completely broke off relations with the goddesses, and she did not stay there. After the ritual of removing powers, she left. The dragons have turned their backs on her, and there is no way to establish friendly relations with the empire. She does not want to return to the goddess again. And the man she trusted most, her husband, betrayed her and ran away. All she wants now is to live only the way she wants Sylvia, after listening to her, thinks. The nasty Wo Cheng, it turns out, was not the only one who proposed to her. Afterwards, she clarifies, does the goddess of dragons know where he is now? She explains that not yet, but she felt his aura. It would take her a day or two to find out its specific location. As soon as she finds him, she will immediately report it. Sylvia answers with a smile, okay. When the time comes, she should allow her to join her investigation. Loli, giving her a thumbs up, notes that this is cool. With her help, they will definitely catch him. And then she will personally send this freak to the sacred land of dragons to torture him thoroughly. They will avenge the two of them and the rest. She also notes, indeed, whether Hello can torture. It seems that such actions should be punished. On that day, everything will be decided. But besides this, she also thinks, of course it sounds good, but doesn't she want to appropriate Wo Cheng? She will never let her do this. Cheng belongs to her. 
Gradually, black night clouds begin to approach the blue moon. Zia Yuayong falls to the floor, hitting her knees on the tiles. She is shocked to think that even her mother did not do this to her. Wu Chang, seeing her condition, clarifies what, and they don't fit. She, standing up between his two clones, cries and says, her eyes are about to come out. Then he easily snaps his fingers and notes with a sigh, oh well. The clones disappear, and she, opening one eye, exclaims, what a terrible reception. What does he even need? She wants to divorce him. But he crosses his arms and notes that not even half an hour has passed since they got married. Does she already want to get a divorce? Was he really that boring to her? Yuayun, spreading his arms to the sides, answers loudly, What nonsense. If it weren't for his deceit, even the last devil wouldn't marry a fool like him. Wu Cheng, hearing this, asks again with a pitiful expression on her face, Did she call him an idiot? Is she tired of living? Then, pushing her, he adds, against ill-mannered girls like her, he has a special method. The next moment, he starts screaming loudly. After a while, she, lying on the floor, notes with irritation that he is demons. Even the Great Mother never punished her like that. He, going to the window and slyly crossing his arms, clarifies, she said that she wants to get a divorce, right? He thinks it won't be that difficult to arrange. Zia Yuayan is asking again, right? But he immediately adds, there is one condition. He needs her help to get one witch. But she replies displeasedly that she would rather die than help him. Then he slowly takes off his outerwear and asks, really. In that case, he has no other choice. Yuayun, following his actions, sternly exclaims, he must stop. Why did he take off his cloak? But Chang silently approaches her and takes her in his arms, causing her to scream in confusion, what is he doing? He must take his hands off her. Then she falls silent, and he throws her on the bed and repeats, what is he doing? Of course, it's all because of love. Deliberately approaching her, Wo Chang adds, It's time for her to grow up. From this day on, they are both married. She can't harm him in any way. Now her strength is nothing against him. She screams when he approaches so sharply and, closing her eyes, with large drops of tears, she thinks, She is a great witch. Will she really allow this pathetic beginning of the century to do this? The sisters must save her. Cheng, like a bloodthirsty monster, slowly extends his hand towards her, and Zia Yuayong, with her eyes closed and her fists clenched, expects the worst. But he stops abruptly and asks what's wrong with her. What's wrong with her face? Did he really scare her that much? Okay, okay, it was just a joke. She hears this and opens her eyes in surprise. He calmly approaches the window despite the night landscape, notes that he is tired, he should go to his room. Yuan first looks at him silently, and then clarifies, will he let him go? Wo Cheng, frowning and looking at her over his shoulder, asks why she froze, or does she want him to continue? She abruptly jumps off the bed and runs away screaming, he's a real freak, only through her tube. But when she opens the door and heads out of the room, he adds, as if he forgot, he wishes her good night. Zia Yuan abruptly slams the door and says rudely, she wishes him the same. But afterwards, leaning one ear and listening, she wonders, what did she say? Why did she say good night to this idiot? Although Cheng spared her today, but one day he will pull his devilish hands towards her again. She can't just sit idly by. Some time passes, there is silence in the corridor. She approaches another door, and opening the door, looks inside. Looking around the room, she wonders out loud, what? Has Lithia gone somewhere? It's even better that way, otherwise it would be different. But suddenly, a black silhouette with red glowing eyes appears behind her, who clarifies, otherwise, what would have happened? Zia Yuan. She immediately quickly says in her defense that nothing like that would have happened, she was just passing by Lithium's room. But turning around, she exclaims, confused? What? That's her. Matriarchal witch, Fang Yanshu appears in front of her. This is a witch who extremely despises men and exercises rule over her lands. Her power used is female supremacy. The effect of this is that the fighting strength of men weakens in comparison to women. She greets her with a sly smile and wishes her good evening. Yuayun, walking inside the room and carefully closing the door, whispers to her she should be quieter. Why did she even come here? What if they are discovered? But Yanchu notes completely relaxed, and there is no need to worry about it. In front of her is only a copy of her. So she really is one step ahead in finding the messenger of Mother Goddess, and how is everything going? It seems like she screwed up as always, otherwise she would already be glowing with happiness. Zia Yuan crossed her arms and looked at her dissatisfiedly and thought, if she had known earlier how things really were, she would not have been in such a hurry and would have let other witches suffer. 
Fang Yanshu sharply opens her fan and adds, although she did not count on anything else. Everything was just as she had imagined. Is there even one guy in this world who would like such a scary girl? After that, she laughs and Zia Yuayong, feeling the fiery evil, just smiles and replies, she shouldn't think that she can conquer all the guys with her big head. Many guys like cute girls like her. And also the witch should not forget that for some period of time she was very popular among the messengers. Yanshu, covering the lower part of her face with a fan, replies that she does not agree with this. All those guys were from another world. And besides, she is a matriarchal witch. It is impossible to count the number of men who have fallen under her heel. There is no one who can compare with her in understanding men. Afterwards, she folds the fan back in notes, so Yuan must humbly expect good news from her. It was her turn. The next moment, she dissolves and finally exclaims laughing, Zia Yuayong should enjoy the show. When she becomes the new Divine Empress, she will give her the title of Iron Plate Witch. Yuan, looking after her, shouts angrily, Fang Yanshu is crazy. Since she decided to do this, then she shouldn't blame her later. She'll see how it all ends. Isn't she going to marry Wo Cheng? Then this witch will be dragged away after her. After that, she thinks with pleasure, who knows, she will become interested in this witch. Then he will have a new toy. Then follows her loud and evil laughter. One thousand years ago in the city of Chengxi, a large bell rang and was followed by a voice that announced trouble. They were attacked by an army of demons. A blonde man in golden armor orders everyone to stop panicking. They must quickly gather all the troops. They will resist as long as they can. It is necessary at all costs to evacuate the civilian population to a safe place. The knight in the helmet replies that he understood the general. But there is a problem. There are too many of them. The two of them walk to the edge of the roof and look at hundreds of approaching monsters of different shapes and sizes. The man, gritting his teeth, wonders how such a huge army of demons could gather so quickly under the walls of the city. This is definitely work. Suddenly the knights point up and exclaim, What is this? Is this a white dragon? The general also takes a closer look and repeats, Is this a dragon goddess? Did she come to help? But there's someone on her back. This is their Chengxi Jixing. A long time ago, in order to confront a common enemy, people and dragons united, and in extremely powerful class, the dragon rider appeared. A brave warrior, in order to gain glory, will have to overcome severe trials and gain recognition from dragons and even the dragon goddess. The knights, looking at the sky, smile broadly and hugging each other say, Great, they are saved. They wish the Lord a long life. And they also wish him a long reign. The white dragon is flying high in the sky. But hearing these exclamations, notes that the people love Wo Cheng. He, sitting on her, agrees, Lowly is right. That's why he must protect these people. Then, throwing his hand forward, he decisively says, They must incinerate their enemies. She, flying down, notes that it is very easy. The next moment, tongues of flame appear from her mouth, and she casts a spell, Yol Tor Shu. Then a stream of flame shoots out at the demons, who scream in horror, dragons. They should run. The clouds in the sky slowly dissolve, releasing the sun, whose rays illuminate the golden gates. A few years later, in the palace of the dragon goddess, Cheng, sitting on the observation tower, turned to Loli and asked, he didn't know how to tell her this, but could he ask her for help in making one pair of rings? She, standing next to him, turned and asked again, Rings. After smiling kindly and closing her eyes, she agreed, of course, she uses the best materials to make them. He immediately turned his head to her and asked again, Is this true? That is, she agreed so easily. Loli replies that it is, it is not a problem considering their relationship with Wo Cheng. Together they fought against the army of demons, together they flew across countless expanses and visited every corner of this continent for food. They went all the way from resistance to acceptance, not soulmates after all. Looking back, she feels like they are an integral part of each other's lives. After that, looking at the setting sun with Cheng, she thinks, really, what an old-fashioned way to admit everything. But he's still a fool. A cloud appears in the new sky, and everything plunges into darkness. Siren, who is the smelting golden dragon, the elder of the dragon clan, sternly says no, she does not agree with Loli. The system explains that from the beginning of the era, subordinate to the dragon goddess, she leads the clan of golden dragons. According to legend, she also fought with the witch and survived. She holds a high position among the dragons, even the dragon goddess cannot ignore her opinion. Loli wonders why. Why doesn't she agree to her marriage with Wo Cheng? 
She, spreading her paws wide and spreading her huge wings, explains because this man is not worth it. She must think with her head. This man disappears for such a long time. He is deceiving her. She has already spent a huge amount of divine power to create the rings. He is just a smug youth who wants to live on an equal footing with them. But Loli insists, Cheng is such a person to me. We haven't been through so much together. She believes him. Siren doesn't let her finish and says sternly, that's enough. She already allowed him too much. Too close a relationship with a person can hurt her. Even if her majesty is a goddess, she can't bear it anymore. If Loli continues to persist, then she will have no place among them and her divine power will be taken away. But she walks away, and with tears in her eyes, she thinks decisively. She knows that there is a good reason for Wo Chang's disappearance. Trust him. Therefore, from the moment he returns, he will protect his people and city. One hundred years later, she, in the guise of a dragon, sat faithfully at the top of the watchtower, peering into the distance. After five hundred years, she was still there, while snowflakes covered her. A thousand years later, the people gathered near the main gate scream furiously as the guards try to stop them, let the dragon goddess get out of their city. They love Zia Yuayam. Demonic art is their treasure. Why does the goddess forbid them to develop this? Only Yuayam can improve their city. The guards are trying to explain to them that everyone must leave immediately. They shouldn't blame them for their inhospitality. The people insist that the dragon goddess must get out of here. Otherwise, the witches will destroy them. Men are trying to explain to them how many times have they already been told about this. It was not Loli who introduced the ban on the practice of demonic arts. But the people don't pay attention to this and continue to shout, So what? She's still a goddess. She is just like her. She needs to get out of here. Zia Yuayan should rule and let the goddess get out of here. Through a small crack between the curtains and the window, a priest looks out, who sighs heavily and notes, Loli should have mercy on these children who do not understand what they are doing. Over the past 1,000 years, if not for her, the city would have already been destroyed by the demonic army. How could people forget her mercy? But when there was no answer, he repeats again, Loli. Turning and looking at her, he wonders what happened. Today she looks especially exhausted. After all, she falls silent and continues to look out the window, wondering what's wrong with him, how she will answer him. As far as he remembers, she has always been like this. When he, as a young man, saw her for the first time, he was amazed by her majesty and beauty. Her silence and the emptiness in her eyes that anticipates eternity. He persistently sought miracles for her from all over the world, in the hope of helping her escape from this emptiness. But her lips did not utter a word. Occasionally, she shook her head. Sometimes he found her alone on the roof, while he looked into the distance, as if expecting something. But suddenly Loli's voice is heard, and she turns to the man in Donis. A tear runs down his cheek, and he, not believing what he heard, asks, did she just call him by name? She stood up and announced that the goddess had just contacted her. They considered her a traitor, and soon she would be determined by her divine power. From now on, she will no longer be able to resist the powers of the witch unless she leaves the city, and it seems that she will destroy all the inhabitants. Indanis asks in confusion if she is really going to leave them. Loli explains that she has fulfilled her obligation and her vow has already been fulfilled. She is grateful to him for his care. It's time for her to go look for him, her beloved. If she mentally turns to Wo Cheng, she doesn't believe that he could betray humanity, betray her. There must be some reason, so she will find him. But where is he? Walking along the bright corridor, Loli thinks, now she looks like this, it seems that he no longer recognizes her. But suddenly she crashes into someone. She and Zia Yuan look at each other in surprise, and she suddenly looks somewhere ahead and exclaims, this is a ring. This is her infinity dragon heart ring. She sees this accessory on Yuan's finger. Pointing her finger, Loli impatiently asks where she got this ring from. She must return it immediately. Zia Yuan first looks at her in bewilderment, and then smiles and says with emotion, she found a cute little girl. But Loli responds by irritably yelling at her to put her down on the floor. Yuan took the Loli by the cheeks and stretched it out, saying, God, I just want to go squeeze these beautiful fleshy cheeks. Loli hit her on the hand and screamed to take her hands off, after which she pointed her finger at her with a menacing expression on her face and screamed that this was just a disgrace. She's a dragon goddess, Loli. And who else is she? She must identify herself immediately. Yuan looked at her in bewilderment and wondered, is she? Her name is Zia Yuan. After that she asked, the Witch of Midnight. What did she forget in the Lithium Domain? So she is the same dragon goddess. How has she changed so much? She's incredibly annoying. What's her business anyway? 
She's just a nasty witch and needs to give her the ring back quickly. She screamed back, no. If she returns this, then she will restore her strength and return to her form as a big-breasted goddess. And this will already get on her nerves. Loli pointed her finger at her and screamed again. What does she have against big breasts? A sleepy Jinxie came into their room, scratched the back of his head, yawned and asked who was there. Why are they so noisy under the door early in the morning? Loli pointed her finger at Yuan and asked why is this person here. She answered with a feeling of fear that he was her slave, when suddenly Jinxie began to say that he was actually her husband, but on the last syllable she cut off his words and covered his mouth with her hand, which made him angry. She got closer and whispered to him through clenched teeth that if anyone finds out that she fell for his marriage scam, she will burn with shame, he must preserve her honor at least in front of the child. He looked questioningly at the lowly standing next to her, who was looking into his eyes on the sly, and he asked a question, addressing her as if she were a baby. What is it? She looked at him emotionlessly and answered after some silence, nothing. She's already leaving. He looked after her and asked if she was okay. Without turning around, she told him not to worry, and he continued to silently watch after her. As she walked along the long corridor, she wondered why this smell of this person was so familiar to her. Moreover, there is the smell of many people on it. The witches of Midnight Lithium, and also the smell of that elf. Something is going wrong around this slave man. Too many powerful personalities are rubbing together. She'll have to find out all about it. With these thoughts, she flapped her wing and flew straight through the window onto the street from a high floor. Meanwhile, in the room, Jinxie asked with a grin, So what? Does she want to argue with him? Yuan pointed her finger to the side and shouted, That's right. If he loses, he will immediately divorce her. She showed him the card and continued to shout that they would use this to determine the winner. He told her that it was quite boring. And if he wins, then what will happen? She asked him to tell him what he wanted in this case. If he wins, she will accept any punishment. But it is pointless because she will definitely not lose. She smiled at him with a wide smile and said that for the last 100 years she had been playing this game every day and his chances of winning were zero. So what? Did he chicken out? He looked at her in bewilderment, scratched the back of his head, and said that they would assume that he had not heard this provocation. Okay, he accepts her deal. But if victory is his, will she definitely accept any of his punishment and not refuse? She screamed with confidence, of course. He replied, great. Then if she loses, she will strip naked, it will be much more interesting. She became embarrassed and shouted at him with dissatisfaction. What did he say? He is a lustful demon and a pervert. Why would she need to undress in front of him? He answered her that since this is a deal, then of course the bets should be what the other side does not want to do. Is not it? Meanwhile, a lowly was watching them from the window and looking at them carefully. Suddenly a scream was heard. Chinxi walked up to Yuan, grabbed her hands and asked what is it? Why is she so nervous? Doesn't she wear underwear? He wants to check it out. She screamed in horror that this was all not true and of course she was wearing it. He asks again, why is she hesitating then? Is she even going to take her clothes off? She screamed back at him, no. He grinned and reprimanded that she was an obstinate girl, to which she answered him, he is simply an incredibly terrible person. Loli watched what was happening in horror and opened her mouth in surprise, after which she flew to the side and thought that this was a problem. What are those two doing there? Everything is very bad. Don't they have a mistress-servant relationship? This man doesn't know his place. What a horror. Even if she invades them now, they simply won't take her seriously. And moreover, if she tells someone, no one will believe it. She urgently needs help. Meanwhile, the servant brought a cup of tea to Lady Lithium. She muttered something in response and asked Sylvia, standing opposite her, how things were going with the slave trade on the second floor. She replied that at the last stage, the underground shelters were destroyed and the participants were arrested. This also applies to many high-ranking officials, and she does not know what to do, so in this case her intervention is needed. Lithia sharply spoke out that everyone should be executed. The servant pressed the tray to her chest and silently looked at the puzzled Lithium. Sylvia answered, but in this case, there will be a shortage of management personnel. Lithia asked her to choose one of their subordinates at her discretion. They have less power, so it will be easier to control them. Sylvia bowed and replied that she understood everything. Everything will be done as she wishes. At this moment, a lowly bursts into her office, opens the doors very sharply, and shouts Lithium's name. Lithia looks at her in fear and asks what is happening. Lowly, what happened? Lowly asks her for help, puts a piece of paper on her table and says, It's all about this person. Does she know him? 
Lowly looks at the drawing and does not understand what is happening, then asks, is she sure that this is a drawing of a person? She answers, of course, she is confident in her creation. Lithia continues to look at the drawing and asks Sylvia if it just seems to her, or is this person somehow similar to Wu Cheng? She answers warily that she is absolutely right, when suddenly Loli starts screaming, Stop. Are they sure this person's name is Wu Cheng? How did she know about this? Lithia replied, Of course she knows him. He is her future husband. How can she not know his name? Does she really think that he can find out the location of Cheng Si Jixing? Does she want her to ask him about it? Loli opened her mouth in shock and asked again, future husband. Sylvia looked at her warily and thought, no, if Loli exposed Cheng's identity, he would be in trouble. After these thoughts, she immediately grabbed Loli's arm and said, Her Majesty, let her let her help Loli. At the same moment, she whispered to Loli to remain silent, because if Light finds out Cheng's identity, she will kill him on the spot without any hesitation, and if he dies, then both of them will not have the opportunity to get even with him. Loli looked questioningly at the floor, after which Lithia smiled and replied, Okay, then they will do it. Sylvia told her, Her Majesty, but she is too kind. She is so busy with government affairs, and there is nothing she can do for her. At this point, she deflects. At that moment, Dany entered Lithium's office. She had a stack of books in her hands, and when she saw Sylvia passing by, she wished her good morning. Loli looked at her questioningly, but Sylvia did not answer her and walked past. Dany did not expect to see such an unpleasant reaction to her goodwill, and, looking in her direction, began to stumble and almost dropped all the books. Lithia asked her a question. Did she find all the necessary reference books? She answered, shouting loudly, yes. The top book was called Postpartum Care. Dany put a stack of books on her table and said that this is all she asked for. Lithia opened a book called The Love Guru, smiled and said that she was doing well and was now awaiting a promotion. Dany shouted, thank you, Her Majesty. She smiled and thought, this is Lithia. She specially selected all these books for her and pleased she should read them carefully. Lithia continued to read the book and thought that her plan would soon come true. The author of this book was Chengxi Jixing, who called himself a friend of all women. Let him wait with her. Loli, when she went out into the corridor with Sylvia, asked her, Does that mean she already knew about Wu Cheng's true identity for a long time? Sylvia was silent in response, and she asked why she didn't tell her about this. Sylvia frowned and looked into the distance and replied, He has his own goals and view of the world, which is why she helped him understand the truth. Yes, they are no longer a goddess. But does she think the current faction is strong enough to protect the world? Loli was dumbfounded when she heard these words and Sylvia continued to speak. The demons lost their memory of what happened, but they remember everything. After they were curbed 1,000 years ago, Wu Cheng became the only person capable of repelling the demons. They continued to destroy their world. They were powerless, having lost the goddess of creation. She and she can no longer bear such responsibility. However, what will become of their people? Who will protect them if the whole world is destroyed? Loli clutched the bag strap in her hand and wondered if she was being too selfish and needed to take care of her people. She stopped and said that her words made sense. Dark Ale, that is, Sylvia. Even though they do not have responsibility for the whole world, no one has canceled the duty to protect their people. She should reconsider her plan. Please, she needs to monitor Wu Cheng at this time. After all, not everyone can handle demonic swords. And they need to be on their guard. Sylvia looked questioningly at the floor and wondered, a charm? Did the full moon demon dare to make his move in lithium territory? Loli went the other way and said that she was leaving Wu Cheng to be her responsibility. She needs to consider next steps. Loli silently looked into the distance and thought that she needs to think about the long term. For now, she will turn a blind eye to all her previous antics but he is obliged to help her restore the dragon clan. Meanwhile, Jinxi looked at Yuan sitting opposite with a smile. He asked if she was okay. Is she sure she can continue playing? There was only one thing left on her, right? Yuan sat fearfully opposite him in only a dress and wondered how this happened. Why, with her vast experience, can she not win a single game? She had already added jewelry and accessories to the rule, and yet there was nothing left on her except this kipao and the feeling that there was a breeze from below. What should she do? Maybe give up. If this continues, what will happen? Jinxie grinned and asked her, getting up from his seat, what's the matter? Can his kind-hearted wife still retreat? She screamed that this was all not true, and that she would never become his wife, and would fight as long as there was the slightest glimmer of hope. She looked at him with a frown and thought that everything was right. 
she shouldn't give up while she has the chance. She pulled a card from the deck and thought that this blow should pierce the heavens. Her eyes glowed a bright red shade, and sparks appeared behind her from her rage, and she looked at the card with a grin before screaming that he lost. This is the fusion of the red-eyed, three-headed dog. Here's his move. Opposite him was a three-headed dog with huge fangs, who stepped loudly on the floor, and the system reported that the damage was 4 e 500. Health 100. Regardless of what he does, the outcome is obvious, and he must make his pathetic move. He grinned and replied, that's right, he only had four strange cards left. However, there are no pathetic moves in this old man's deck, devil. Let her let you show her what happens when a person trusts his cards too much. He suddenly began to wave his arms and used a special move, the call of the Buddhist will. After that, he raised the card, the deck glowed with magical light, and Yuayun opened her mouth in shock and screamed that this simply could not be. He shouted, let it rise. A witch appeared from the multitude, which he pointed at these dogs and screamed, an invincible dark prisoner. The damage is immeasurable. The dog sank to the floor and looked at her in horror. She used her powers while Jinxie shouted, the dark prisoner must attack the red-eyed, three-headed dog, all-consuming ray of destruction. Yuan backed away from the strong wind and the bright glow that formed in front of her, and then began to scream, no. Her health dropped to zero, and bright rays of light passed through her, and she sank to her knees from powerlessness, sadly saying that she had lost again. Why did this happen? He replied that it was obvious, because all her experience was based only on battles with artificial intelligence. But since she lost, he is forced to ask her to fulfill the conditions. I wonder what else she's wearing. She turned to him with a feeling of embarrassment and asked again, What? He got closer to her and asked with a grin if they weren't married. She shouldn't be so embarrassed, because he won't lay a finger on her. She backed away and screamed, And what is he waiting for? She won't undress. He became sad and asked again, but isn't she herself to blame for this, her wife? What a bad example she will set for their future children. Tears appeared in her eyes, and she shouted at him to continue dreaming, because she would most likely bite off his tongue than let him touch her. She no longer intends to tolerate this marriage. She started to remove the ring from her finger, when suddenly she realized this thing. Why can't she take it off? She tried to remove the ring with serious effort, but Jinxie asked again, did she think that she could remove a divine rank item so easily? She became alert and repeated these words in her thoughts. A divine rank item, yes. She will be able to get rid of the ring using her innate shell removal skill. She wants to activate her innate skill. Yuan pointed her hand towards the floor and created a magic circle around herself that glowed with a bright pink hue and produced many sparks. Jinxie back from the bright glow and said in surprise, magic circle. Just don't let her tell him what she wants. But before he could finish speaking, she grinned with an ominous smile and answered that everything was true. The sacred skill of removing the shell, supported by the magical power of the devil, can easily neutralize the power of the ring. He shouted at her, extending his hand, that she was just a fool and should stop doing this. But a moment later, there was an explosion in the room, and her dress flew off her body and fell right on Jinxie's head. She found herself naked in front of him and looked in front of him questioningly, after which she screamed loudly in irritation so that she could be heard even on the street. Sylvia heard this scream and wondered if it was the voice of the Midnight Witch. This is not good. Jinxie came closer and pulled up her dress and asked her not to cry. He warned her. She should quickly throw on some clothes. She screamed angrily. Why did only her clothes fly off? What about the ring? Incredible embarrassment was visible on her face, tears flowed from her eyes, and she asked again, covering herself with the fabric from her dress. He didn't see anything right. He raised his hand up and, with the same reddened expression on his face, replied that he swears it. She asked again with rage, what is the point of an oath if she already knows everything? He pulled his hand towards some object and looked at it questioningly and asked what kind of balls of mucus were they? Yuayun, with even more irritability, snatched it from his hands and shouted to return it, calling him a demon pervert. He stood aside from her sudden movements and was dumbfounded when he suddenly realized that he seemed to understand everything. She reached for her dress and instantly ran in the other direction without putting it on. He caught up with her and shouted to stop, asking where she was going in such a naked state. She screamed at him to let her in, calling her a tempter. He tried to calm her down and asked her to at least put on some clothes, because people would think the wrong thing. Suddenly, everyone was dumbfounded when Sylvia entered the room and looked at them with a dumbfounded expression. She realized that there was a naked girl and an embarrassed man nearby, 
This seemed too intriguing to her, and she screamed in a fit of hatred, illuminated by a bright magical light, that he was a shameless animal. He waved his hand at her and asked her to listen to him, because this was not what she was thinking about. Yuan grinned and asked a question. That is, he forced her to become his wife while already married. Just how disgusting a bug is he? Sylvia heard this question and asked again, wife. She smiled and said that she did not think that he would be able to master the witch so quickly. Nothing less was expected from a loved one. He answered, yes, that's exactly it. And now he was just trying to prevent her from running out into the street in this form. Yuayun, who had already put on a dress, asked if this somehow justifies him. He spoke in response, but it was she who did not listen to him and used her innate skill. What then was he guilty of? She pointed her finger at him and shouted that it was all his fault and he shouldn't argue with it. And in general, this is all terrible and he shouldn't think about it, it'll just get away with him. She gets rid of this ring and officially divorces him. And now she's already leaving and they have to have fun here without her. She doesn't want to be the third wheel. Sylvia looked after her with a menacing expression on her face and Jinxie also could not utter a word when she left, after which he turned to Sylvia and asked why she came so unexpectedly. Didn't she help with lithium? Sylvia bowed her head and remained silent to his question, after which she sharply turned away and he asked again, what was the matter? She doesn't want to talk to him. She replied that she would stop talking, after which she sat on the bed and asked him to come to her. He became very wary and thought that he was suddenly overcome by a powerful feeling. He smiled, stretched his hands and replied that he was already on his way to her. When he sat down next to her, he hugged her and said, it looks like his wife is still angry with him. She sees, this is a situation with the Witch of Midnight. But before he could finish speaking, Sylvia spoke back, turning away from him, that she was not his wife and he should call his witch that. He smiled and told her that she was his beloved wife, to which she replied that flattery would not help him in any way. Should he say how many goddesses he has already offended? He got scared and thought, once upon a time he only received an achievement in the game. Sylvia pointed her finger at him and screamed angrily that since he couldn't gather his thoughts and say something, he was going to lie to her. Is not it? How is he going to explain himself? From all his victims, you can assemble a punitively vengeful squad. He answered, it's not like that. It is very difficult for him to find the right words. She continued to yell at him. Recently, his old friend, the dragon goddess, invited her too. She offered 100 million platinum coins for his capture. Seriously, how did he manage to offend the goddesses so much? He was dumbfounded and repeated, Sylvia. He really can't find the right words. In order to buy divine level wedding rings that were needed for a contract with the devil, he spent days and nights winning the hearts of goddesses. At one time, he was even a legend in the community of that game. Many players followed his example, also starting to win the hearts of the goddesses, so he had to calm down. But once he entered this world, he began to be considered a slippery guy. How terrible it is! Why didn't the goddess of creation erase the memory of the entire character? The goddesses are still discussing the division of his captured body. Some crave the top, others the bottom. This is the end, he hears only the words brother in his head. She grabbed his cheeks and asked him not to worry because she was different and wanted all of him. Everything he has belongs to her, and she will not allow anyone to even touch him with a finger. He is only hers. She loves him too much, dear. He realized with horror that this was destructive love. She placed his head in her chest and tried to make a child. He looked to the side in fear while Sylvia wondered with admiration what to call him. He pulled out of her embrace and said that he couldn't breathe. She let go of him and shouted an apology, and he opened his mouth to take in more breath. She sat down next to him as he tried to catch his breath, apologized again, and said that she had simply lost her composure. Is everything okay with him? He replied, yes, everything is fine. Sylvia became sad and said that she felt uneasy at the thought that other goddesses wanted to take possession of him, and she did not want to lose him anymore. He became wary, after which he hugged her tightly and said her name. Sylvia was surprised. He looked into her eyes and said that for a very long time she perceived this as a game. What does she think about asking Yuayan after his mission to prepare a pair of god tear rings for them? No changes can make up for all the pain that he caused her because of his stupidity. She suffered for 1,000 years and she is very sorry, Sylvia. He loves her very much. She came to his chest and shed a tear, after which she said that now she felt much better and thanked him mentally. An hour later, she approached the doorway and said that it was time for her to go home. There was a lot of work left with lithium, and when creating rings, he must definitely use the material that she gave him. 
He held an object with a plant in his hands and said to her, waving his hand in bewilderment, Okay. He silently looked at the hand that held the elven vitality fruit. The system reports that it has an epic rank item effect, improves yang flow, strengthens the kidneys, increases fertility by 50%. Item description, elven atmospheric storm fruit. He wondered, Sylvia, did she really want to become a goddess of childbirth or something? She sympathized with the pleasure as she walked along the corridor and said that it was impossible to walk everywhere with such a happy face, which is why she patted herself on the cheeks, became more serious, and said that it was much better this way. She needs to work harder for Wu Cheng. Three nights, Zia Yuayong's room. Discs were scattered everywhere. She said that she would not lose for anything. She's training hard to beat Wu Cheng. Because of hatred and anger, she shouted that she would certainly defeat him, break off this marriage, and make him her slave. For freedom. At the same time, Lithia was reading the book of the love guru. In order to win Cheng's heart, she spent the whole night carefully studying the aspect of romance, coming to the conclusion that many human emotions are much more complex than one can imagine. This seemed quite confusing to her. After some time, while playing the console, someone shouted that the Hadouken should get what it deserves. Great, one player wins. Yuan grabbed her head and screamed with joy, and Jixing, who was drinking a drink from a straw, asked her with an arrogant expression on his face, Is this all she can do? How many times has he beaten her lightly, if he should count it? She looked at the joystick thoughtfully, after which she grabbed a pillow and began hitting it and screaming, The last game doesn't count, you sneaky bug. He cowardly sits in his corner and throws rays at her. He shouted back at her, Why was she saying such a thing? Is this the famous technique? After giving up her part of the deal, she calls him cunning. He defeated her 49 times in a row, but she did absolutely nothing for herself, and who else is being cunning here? She was dumbfounded, turned away from him with hatred, and he began to think again. As soon as he had to explain everything, she resorted to the same action. Why does she have so much shamelessness? He also completely forgot that after an act of stubbornness, she would simply up and run. It got him. He lay down under the blanket on the bed and exhaled, when suddenly she hit him in the face with a pillow again and screamed not to sleep. I suggest we play it one more time, because she definitely won't lose the Monster Hunter game. He shouted, maybe they should take a break. They have been playing since the morning, can he rest? Plus, she starts being stubborn again when she loses. She got even angrier and screamed. She will definitely keep her word if they sign the contract. Yuan created a magical light in her hand and said that this contract is absolute, and even as a witch she is not able to destroy it. He crossed his arms in front of him and replied that he was not interested. He's already seen enough. What more can she offer? She shouted that she was betting her castle to lose this time. He replied that this would not work. The lithium palace was more than enough for him. Yuan shouted that in case of defeat, she would give him everything she had. He thought, this girl, he has no idea what kind of excuse she will find this time, and the reliability of the contract raises great doubts, but he believes that she has had no one to play with for thousands of years and thinks that today he can be patient. Okay, there's nothing to do anyway, he can play. She grinned and screamed, great. Then she offers to discuss the terms of the contract. If she loses their bet, then all her property belongs to him. But if he already loses, then he will become her slave, who does nothing but play games with her. The magical object is spoken, as it will be as soon as she wishes, the contract is concluded, glory awaits the winner, and shame awaits the loser. Their duel has begun. Is he ready for this? It pushed her finger and looked at him with a grin, when suddenly her whole body was illuminated with magical light. Jixing did not expect to see this at all and backed away and a moment later he found himself in a completely different dimension and was welcomed into the game of a monster hunter. He silently looked around and said with joy, God, this is simply incredible. This means that the UION illusion is capable of recreating this. Even the NPCs and visuals are realistic. Someone in armor approached him and asked if he wanted to know why the illusions seemed to be alive. It was UION who immediately answered her own question, because they create not only the appearance, but also include all five senses. Is he ready to hunt? This time, the essence of the competition is to destroy monsters. Meanwhile, in the lithium room, Sylvia told her, No, it's not like that, Her Majesty. She must repeat after her. Both hands are on the lower abdomen, chin inward, chest higher. Lithia repeated all the necessary movements, but from her facial expression, it was clear that this was not easy for her and her body was trembling. Sylvia told her, No, you don't need to squeeze your stomach so hard. Did she tell her to hold her breath? 
Her Majesty, she suggests taking a short break and continuing your studies a little later. Lithia exhaled and barely standing said that she was very tired and did not understand how she managed to do this. Sylvia replied that she had been learning this since early childhood. The classes were part of the daily routine and every movement was lost in the bones, so there is no need to rush, Her Majesty. This cannot be learned in one sitting. Letty wiped the sweat from her face and said, No way. If she doesn't improve her charm, then Yuayun will take over all the authority. Where is this idiot anyway? She's been hanging around Chang all day. Sylvia frowned and thought, like Lithium is unknown about Chang's victory over Yuayun. But for his great goal, just the Witch of Midnight will not be enough. If he can conquer Lithium, then the wonderful future will no longer be so illusory, and although she is not able to provide much help, she will still do everything she can. Since she understands everything herself, there is no point in holding back anymore. From this point on, they move on to some really tough training. Lithia shouted back to her that there was no problem in this, to which Sylvia asked to call her an instructor, and she shouted, That's right, instructor. Meanwhile, the virtual game reality Yuayun was running somewhere at incredible speed and screaming loudly. Task completion time 16 minutes 28 seconds, two victims. She destroyed two monsters and asked with a smile, did he even see this? She broke her own record. It's all over for him. Jixing, meanwhile, swung a sharp weapon and beat something nearby, after which he abruptly grabbed a bone with meat in his hands and said that it was the perfect preparation. He sat near the fire and rejoiced while Yuayan looked at him with a sad expression on her face and asked what he was doing. She silently continued to observe his actions, and he answered her that she was stupid because he was preparing for the upcoming hunt. It seems her experience is limited to superficial knowledge of the game. Being fed and full of energy is also part of the hunt. She was dumbfounded after these words, and Jixing began to eat a piece of meat. Drooling began to flow from her mouth, and she asked if he really had to start eating. He threw the bone aside and said, Great! He was full and prepared all his potions. After that he turned into a guy in heavy armor and said that everything is ready. Yuayan looked at him in bewilderment, and he told her to get ready to see a true professional. Meanwhile, Sylvia put a glass of water on Lithium's head and said like this, She must maintain her balance and move forward along the railing without spilling a drop of water. Lithia shouted at her to stop, asking why she was making her training so difficult. Sylvia repeated that she was an instructor, and Lithia shouted, That's right, instructor. This is a standard that is fulfilled by the age of six, and she is sure that Her Majesty will not have any difficulty passing it. She hit her hand with a stick, and then started beating Lithium's legs, and asked her to tighten her calves like this, and stand on her tiptoes. Great, now I keep my form, it should move forward. Lithia continued these actions with caution, and reflected that she was ready to risk absolutely everything for the sake of divine status. A moment after these thoughts, she stumbled and began to fall straight to the floor, loudly exclaiming in pain. And when she stood up a little, she saw her wet body because of the spilled glass of water and said that it looked like she needed a shower again. Sylvia was upset and said, Her Majesty, she thinks it would be better to return to elementary practice. Lithia asked again to the primary. Meanwhile, in the game reality, a loud scream was heard and Yuayan screamed, What does this mean and why is there a trap here? She was caught in ropes and lifted up to a tree. Jixing looked at her and asked how did she even manage to get into this. She screamed at him and asked him for help. He took off his helmet and said that this trap was intended for monsters, and he did not understand why they wasted time and tinkered with his traps. She became even more angry and shouted, so this belongs to him. He should let her go immediately. He's a terrible man. He put his hands on his belt and asked if he made her rub next to it. Maybe he'd better leave her there before she falls into another trap. She got scared and screamed, Is this too much? Who even approaches this game this way? He replied, God, she doesn't even know the basics, and she's just too left-wing a girl. Suddenly, he heard a loud sound nearby behind the bushes and looked in that direction. A dragon approached him and he asked, Did it decide to come to him? What a horror. Now he has one less trap and the result is not ideal. He pulled out a weapon from behind his back and said, Okay, we should forget this, because this will also work. The dragon opposite him began to scream loudly, and Jixing shouted for this creature to come closer. Yuayan laughed loudly and shouted at this black dragon to finish him off. She continued to gloat, hanging from the tree, and screaming for this creature to go forward and fight to destroy this freak. Jixing responded questioningly to the words, and the monster's paws glowed with a magical light, as did the entire body of this creature, 
and because of which it roared loudly. Jixing swung his weapon numerous times and said, Air cutter. Execution time 3 minutes 11 seconds, zero casualties. Yuan screamed in surprise when she saw the dragon fall to the ground. What? The dragon stuck out its tongue and didn't move, causing her to scream that it was all quite boring. He should have at least put on an impressive show. He asked her again, impressive shows. Let her forgive him, but this game move is called a speedrun. Passing the mission with the goal of the highest completion. And the game is over, and she must remove the illusion. Yuan said with tears in her eyes, well, completely not understanding how this happened, the Witch of Midnight became such a poor girl. Ten minutes later, they found themselves in their room, and Jixing looked at Yuan with bewilderment and asked what she was doing. She looked at him with a pleading look, and he said that this won't work. She must accept defeat with dignity and respect the contract. After his words, she clenched her teeth in anger and swore, when suddenly she suddenly began screaming in hysterics, No, this game doesn't count because he used items. She does not want and will not do this and asks him to replay. He watched as she beat the bed with her hands and feet and thought that of course he didn't expect her to keep her promise, but everything had gone too far. What kind of kindergarten is this? She got closer to him, grabbed his collar and screamed at him to take pity on her and take everything, but not to touch her games and collections. He told her that things wouldn't work that way. He spoiled her too much, so a little life lesson will do her good. A bright magical light appeared between them, and they were both surprised by it. The magic item reported that an attempt to violate the terms of the contract was recorded, and according to the contract, she becomes the slave of the winner of the competition. She was very surprised and shouted, Slave. A chain around her neck was pointed at her and wrapped around her. Yuan frightenedly grabbed the chain and shouted that she was in great pain, continuing to ask Cheng for help. What should she do now? She continued to scream as Jixing watched her in shock, fear visible in his eyes. A huge monster appeared in front of him, which continued to spread around the room and said, After 1,000 years, he finally showed up. Jixing backed away from fear. The monster pulled his hands towards him and asked him to come to him. Suddenly, this creature disappeared before his eyes, and he silently looked at Yuan, who was trying to get rid of the chain around her neck. He began to wonder what kind of voice it was. It seemed familiar to him. This means that even she cannot resist this force. I wonder who owns this anyway. He picked up the chain and said out loud, Since this chain can fix even a mighty witch, it's better to take it off. Yuan looked at him with hope in her eyes. He approached her and spoke with a smile. Only the contract worked so he couldn't do anything, and it was all her fault. Who here said that he would give up all his property if he lost? Now she is in power. She should understand by now that a contract is not something to joke about. She lowered her gaze and moaned something in response when suddenly she began to scream with tears in her eyes. Her consoles and consoles, he asked again, will she play for anything again? She screamed that this wouldn't happen again, and he asked again, would she still lie? She screamed, never. She would never lie to him again. He sighed and said, let's say this time he believed her, but if she obeys again, then next time he won't be so kind. She wiped away her tears and asked again, Is this true? He replied, of course. Why does he need her games? With her face flushed with embarrassment, she reached out to him with her hands and shouted what a good person he was. He got angry and asked to behave decently and also stop wiping your nose on him. And she grinned and he removed the chain from her neck. Yuan calmed down and said what a terrible thing this is. He asked again who forced her to sign the contract. Suddenly the voice of the system was heard, which announced that the favor of the Witch of Midnight had been increased to level 2, a slight improvement. Mana replenishment skill unlocked. He wondered favor, even without a potion. Mana replenishment, newbie. After marriage, with the consent of the partner, he can absorb his characteristics and experience. This can be done through intimate contacts. He must carry out an improvement to unlock new positions. The effectiveness of the skill improves along with favor. He addressed her by name and said that he wanted to ask her for something. What does she think of him? Is he still disgusted with her? She got angry and shouted, What kind of question is this? Terrible guy. Of course she hates him. He also annoys her. He should not think that he did a good deed and her opinion immediately changed. After these words, she stuck her tongue out at him and he thought, Classic Tsundir, has favor appeared? She became embarrassed and spoke in a quiet voice. But he really and sometimes can be useful. But for example, when he plays video games with her, but she doesn't want to play with him, she's just very bored by herself. He looked at her with a feeling of calm and asked if maybe she didn't have enough losses. Is she a masochist? 
she shouted back at him. Who else is the masochist here? Let him wait. Next time she will beat him. He answered, okay, but he suggests not betting on marriage. She shouted back that she understood everything.